Hey there, welcome to Picture This New Media. My name is Lal Ernie, and today I'll be um, streaming the Not D&D Generation campaign with, uh, we'll be doing the Regicide uh, with Josh, our DM, and uh, there's going to be a couple of new guys. Uh, we'll be playing, re continuing to play the Return to Dark Magi, uh, where we go and further deliberate what happened to the king, find a guy in relation to it, escape with our lives. So, yep, it's a sci-fi fantasy based game. It's really fun and I hope you enjoy. If you uh, want to join or play the game, get in contact with me or Josh and uh, yeah, we can get you started. Moving the wrong thing here, sorry. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and connect to the Discord now. Uh, if I miss your messages, sorry. I will do my best to keep up with both. got this going. Um, sorry for the background hum. It's just uh, air conditioning. There's nothing I could do about it right now until I update my mics. But yeah, let me uh, do one more thing. My name's Ernie. Who, who, what was your name? Uh, my name is Robin. Robin, it's nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. <coughs> so, does everybody remember what happened last time on Dragon Ball Z? I certainly don't. We were at an auction. Yeah, I think we just yeah, finished right. off our our auction black market we... uh, stuff. We were doing actually. We were doing the the auction, the big the big boy auction, the container auction. Yeah, the container. We bought two of them. And we one. we were like in the middle of that. We need to do like a couple more to get rid of the rest of that money. There's two or three more containers, I think. And I think we bought we bought one for sure. We bought two, I think. I think we bought two, yeah. I, oh, that's right, because uh, Shinna bought the first one, and I bought the second one. The yeah. one you were currently on was changer, Chamber Number 3, which started at 3800 The last counter bid made by an opponent, an adversary, who was surrounded by gold, was at 11000 Is this the uh, the royalty vault? Because we let that one go. Yeah, we, we, we let that one go, and the, guy, the gold the got pen? mad. He's it will be let go if you do not offer a counter bid. This is the Royal Vault or 
This is yeah, that's correct. This is the House of Obsidian Silver. So, yeah. what's the price at now? Uh, the price is at eleven thousand. Let's go to thirteen thousand. Shinna, do you fuck? do you think Whoa. the the stuff will be in there? The stuff you're looking for. Before? I'm not looking for anything. I'm just doing this side no, content for you, you, you guys. Uh, you, but yeah, that's part of the thing. Weren't you supposed to be looking for a certain element, and they give they get part of it? Well, he got told that uh, one of the bins has Chronos in it. Yeah, that's what. Like, well, that was a given one to us. This is that one's separate from the ones we're auctioning on now. I believe. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. What are we doing exactly? So Am you are in the commerce district within Dark Magi. Some setup. Your company has already, your group has already entered, infiltrated the old capital. Uh, you are currently wearing uh, a set of seals that are going to change your identity and Mana's signature, lest it be recognized and detected. As again, the elite guard members are public figures, and your faces are well known. However, um, as part of your mission here, you decided to accrue additional resources by going to the substreets of Dark Magi's capital, specifically to the Commerce District, looking for uh, basically a black market to accrue wares that might be useful for your investigation. And uh, I am among this. Wanna... Yes, you are. Uh, does everybody want to go ahead and inform Chief as to what you look like? And Chief, you can do the same. Uh, I'll start. I'm essentially a very big old man with uh, eyes that will make you feel like I can see into your soul. You're a big old man? Yeah, a really, really big old man. Like, like eight feet tall? Yeah, taller. Taller than eight feet? Uh, yeah, like uh, nearly nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's making Shaq look minuscule. You know, all the doors on Magi are eight feet standard. Yeah, I have two and a half meters. Crouch, That's not true. Like, no. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have to duck under every door. Doors I'm very bird. I am very bird. They change to fit whoever's going inside them. Hey, Josh, I think oh. you should make them do door checks. Oh. Okay, door well, <laughs> checks are good. Um, and then, even though I'm in disguise, I am still an adept. I just don't uh, look like me, but I still look like an adept in disguise. He has he has glasses on and an earring on the opposite ear. And that's how no one recognizes. <laughs> yeah, and, and my role is is bodyguard, I'm bodyguard for Ronica and uh, Sadi, because I believe Sadi has the I'm a outer appearance. Of an I, agent. Yeah, uh, my normal yeah. adept thing is I look like a young buck, kind of like that anime picture I have there. Um, very nerdy, very, very nerdy, and um, is but, that character from that dungeon anime? Yeah, that's that dungeon. Um, the uh, I forget. Can't pick up girls in a dungeon. Yeah, or something can't pick up girls called. in a dungeon. Yeah. That guy. He has, a, he has a body plush pillow. Yep. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> but right now, I'm looking like a dark Magian. Um, yeah, just like a dark Magian. Alright. Well, well... What are, what are dark Magians? Dark Magians, um... There's no distinct features that any of the races really need to have, other than they all need to be humanoid. So, two hands, two legs, two eyes, two ears. One tail. What about no seven tail. legs? Tails are banned. <laughs> uh, no fur or scales or tails or wings. Unless uh, you're using organic chemistry. Yeah, unless you have some sort of get-up. <laughs> unless you've got a trait. Um... Generally speaking, they have darker hair, um, darker hair, darker purple, darker blue. The emo magians. The, You're completely um, white. The magians all have is they generally have tattoos uh, signifying their house uh, listed somewhere on their face. Oh, so there's 
So they're SoundCloud rappers. I mean, like, why on the face? Uh, because before the ancestor, the ancestor for backstory is the the global consciousness of the Magitech infrastructure. Basically, the entire planet of Magi is hollowed out and replaced with an immense megastructure that serves as a consciousness to the planet so that it can maintain the safety of the planet at all times. Anyway, the, uh, before the ancestor could display somebody's status, uh, you would put your status on your, on your person in some fashion. To indicate what house you belong to. Because in generation there is no economy in Magi because Magi has the ability to use alchemy, which pretty much you can spawn matter out of space, uh, which basically means you have infinite energy and resources. So conventional economies don't make any sense. Instead, the economy is more of a uh, social status thing. How much renown you have, and so everybody is incentivized to display their status and so far what they've accomplished, what credentials they have, and so forth. I see, that makes sense. Wozer, bozer. Uh, anyway, uh, so that, basically Magians, even if they belong to the same house, will try to display their house insignia somewhere on their face or body. Uh, in a different fashion, they may maybe an incomplete uh, piece of the emblem. There's there's infinite amount of ways with which you can display your house. How often do they put it on their butts? Uh, I would say probably next to none of the time because <laughs> nobody's gonna see it there. Stupid. <laughs> I mean, some probably do like to not wear clothes. I'm willing to bet there's some. Yes. There's got to be some naked warriors, especially amongst the adept. And when you're not wearing a whole lot of warriors, you on probably that look at your butt. So it's honestly more effective than the face. Hey, what's up? Impossible. And that, that's that's high carb pasta, so don't, don't eat it. <laughs> All right. I can't believe um, it's pasta. So does anybody else need to describe themselves? I'm, I'm average in height. What is average? Like, like, uh... 5'4". I'm, uh, probably 1.6 meters. 1.6, 1.7 meters. I'm not fat. I've got blacker than black hair with, uh, purple streaks, uh, in it. And, uh, <laughs> beard, uh, with, uh, gray streaks in it. But what that's are you the, wearing? What are you wearing? The, uh, right. Oh, what am I wearing? Yeah. Um, I'm wearing a yellow banana hammock. Wow, that's pretty ostentatious, if I do say so myself. Wait, what are you wearing? A uh, yellow banana hammock. What the heck is a banana hammock? Are you familiar with a Speedo? You're from Europe? Yes, yes I am. Yeah, so I'm wearing a yellow Speedo. That's not fair. Wait, but so you you're basically just in your underwear. He looks like Borat. I don't know who that is. No. What? Very nice. You're banned. <laughs> she was banned. Next thing you know, you're going to tell me you don't know what the Goonies are. Do you know what Team America is? I am not American, so I'm not sure why I would. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's going to be some sort of excuse? What the fuck? Whatever you do, it's hella racist. That's all I can say. No. <laughs> In a good way, though. No. <laughs> I just said he's not American. What a racist. <laughs> all you need to know is everything we do tastes and smells like freedom. Okay. And when uh, something really fucking awesome happens to you, the only thing you need to say is America. America. Fuck yeah. yeah. Note the high the exclusion of a, of a. Okay. Um, so that's who you guys are. Uh, you all should be wearing garbs or some sort of 
uh, cape around a set of armor that indicates you as uh, members of the gold mercenaries. That's Ronica right. was mentioned before. She is your contact here in Dark Magi, who is serving as your escort for your profile to avoid detection. You are serving as her bodyguards. So she is currently here with you right now in the Commerce District. You have engaged in accruing a whole lot of credit within the Dark Magian Commerce District area here. And you're currently in the middle of auctioning of uh, vaults or chambers. Basically, because real estate is one of the only real commodities in Magi that cannot be infinitely reproduced, um, exclusive rights to storage here on Magi uh, under the protection of the palace is pretty exclusive. And when residents lose accreditation or are exiled from Dark Magi or simply fail to return within due time, their vaults are taken and sold off in the commerce district or to uh, private firms and these vaults sometimes belong to high caliber profiled people such as this one that you're currently bidding for at a current bid of 11,000 credits this belongs to the house of obsidian silver that's one of the most esteemed houses with deep connections to the Senate and the royal, uh, the royal house of the actual uh, Magian King and so forth. Their lineage. I and the current bid the is eleven thousand. It's eleven thousand. Uh, do you know what your current bank is? I don't even know if there are any banks. I thought we were around thirty-eight. Hmm. At this point. Let's see, you've got a purchase of 2700, 1700, uh, 150, 175, so that's 350, it's 1000, 2000, 15, 4750, and then you made 2500, and then another 1750. Um, so you're in the bucket, it looks like. You're in the bucket for about 3000. 6,000, 7,000, nearly 8,000 in the bucket. Uh, I don't know that term, in the bucket. In the bucket. What's that so, mean? In the hole? In the hole means you're, you owe. You're, you're in the, the hole in the bucket, dear Liza. Wait, so we owe money? We spent all our money and then some? No. Okay, then I don't know what the term means. In well, the it means you spent some, some money, but your bucket can uh, hold the current uh total so you made 45,000 from the thing right and then you started with three and then you made that other money anyway so um blah 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 the net losses are about 6,000 not including what you started with which is like 48,000 so yeah so you're saying we've spent six of 48 it uh, no, you, the net losses, not counting what you started with and what you've made with uh, Shinnaz's thing, uh, is 6,000. So. That's right. I sold those two swords for 45,000. I sold the elemental for 7,500. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You sold it for 7,500? Yeah. I didn't know that. It was pretty fucking that. high. I did not write that down, sir. That sounds right. I did recall that. Yep. Okay. We're gonna add seventy five. I also happen to suddenly recall that. Okay, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> okay, so you're basically positive then. Uh upwards of about two thousand ish. <laughs> so you're still on top with a lot So we of haven't gotten the forty five K yet? <laughs> you have. And we, we've spent it. Uh, negative. Well, cause I thought you said we only have about 2,000. Mm -mm. Nope. Yeah, we have a lot of fucking money, so. And if we only have about 2,000. Nope, I never said that. You have okay. over 40,000 at this point. Is that a lot? Okay, well, I was saying yeah. we were at 38,000, so if we're over 38,000, 
Yeah, I mean, I can only go by what's on the the little ledger here. Yeah, I thought uh, we were... I remember we were around 40,000, and then we bought those other units. I mean, if we're above 38, I agree. Hockey we're dog. at from 38, I agree. Uh, All right. Uh, Betting 13,000 for this container. Holy shit, okay. You just went up two thousand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You ever been to the Middle East morning star? Uh no. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to piss this dude off. I, I, I just want to see how good your haggling skills are. If you've been to the Middle East, I can tell. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody haggles better than Middle Eastern people. Right. Right. All right. Let's see, let's let's play this out. Let's let's draw this out there. Fine, not thirteen thousand. Let's go to eleven five hundred. You're not going. Okay, so basically, uh, the guy you were bidding against, uh, based on what you could tell from his uh, demeanor and attire, which is a silvery and white getup, uh, he's also wearing a mask, um, and he has a, a collected body five bodyguards around him that are denoted to be gold. Uh, oh, that's right. They are. Uh, they belong to the Gold Mercenary Group, which is a popular and very expensive uh, source for bodyguards here. The blah blah blah. Anyway, same um, yeah, same as you. And uh, the guy came up to you last time, one of the uh, guards, and said what the fuck your problem was, why you were not willing to let. Uh, his client go ahead and take care of this chamber. He finally had enough and moved uh, the price to eleven hundred. I'm sorry, eleven thousand. After some time. Anyway, so if you want to continue to bid to eleven five hundred, is that correct? Yeah, yes. that's it. Yeah, because uh, we're not technically making these bids. Technically, Veronica's making these bids. Uh huh. <laughs> That's correct. So as far as, hey, what are you doing? It's like, uh, what I'm told, my job, my mistress has said, bid on that. Okay. Veronica's okay. probably freaking out. <laughs> All right, well, so yeah, he's out because he's been tasked to bring back this royal thing, probably for a royal family. When he comes back without it, they're going to get fucking shyster they're, they're gonna be they're gonna give him a stern talking to these other assholes with deep pockets they um, had deep as, the pockets crowd, the as the crowd looks over to your solitary <laughs> counter bidder um he turns away with, with saying nothing and leaves with two of the bodyguards two of them remain behind and begin to stare your group down uh, am I still as tall, or is the disguise making me shorter? Uh, you... That's up to you to decide. What does your disguise look like? Uh, uh... I look, uh, I look like an even older, older man. I'm still just as tall, but I have a big, uh, I have a big white beard. Are you still a sire? Yeah, yeah I'm still a sire. Otherwise, the size would be weird. Oh, what's your name, by the way? Gold. 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 Okay. Gold. Gold. I I uh. I I stare back into their eyes with my glowing eyes because I have those. If you didn't know. Okie dokie. Uh, I simply make a move and stand closer to Ronica, like, uh, I guess if trying to protect her, like, oh, you guys are going to do something? They mentioned that uh, Clyde, who is a ranking member of the Golds here on Dark Magi, they mentioned that Clyde uh, would be hearing about this should you refuse to let their client take it. It's going to go to you. Bidding for eleven fifty-five, eleven thousand uh, five hundred. You receive the obsidian silver 
chamber. Oh. It is known. Uh, it was labeled as the wardrobe chamber. Got a bunch of clothes. Uh, Kronos, you could probably benefit from that. Say again. Uh, Kronos, you were the one wearing the speed, right? I still didn't hear that. Kronos, you were the one wearing the speed, right? You're wearing the speedo. Yeah. Oh, right, the banana hammock. Oh, yeah. I probably use it that. Um, uh, Kronos, if you right click on Chief in the Discord, you can increase his volume for you. Oh, yeah, right. Let me try that. I think I've done that with everybody else, but Chief. Nope, I got Chief at, I got Chief at 200%. What the flip? Speak up, damn it. Okay, um. So, yeah, you're going to get the chamber, uh, the audience claps, and the uh, auctioneer says, uh, gracefully accepted by Lady Ronica. Oh, Lady Ronica! Am I louder now? Am I louder now? Uh, yes. Yeah. Good. Uh, Ronica then reciprocates by making a gesture familiar to her house. And uh, maintains a modest composure. That's our girl. <laughs> Okie dokie. What happens now? Uh, they're going to move on to the next chamber. You can exit the auction at any time you choose and open the chambers that you have. Two left, right? Here. Uh, there are two chambers left, that's correct. Alright, Bob. Or Rod. Let's see the next item up for bids. Alright, this All right. is labeled as a storage chamber. This has been in the vault. Uh, it has been unopened for four cycles before it was finally collected to the Commerce District. Starting price at we're gonna go with 700 credits all right what what are the details about it again hasn't been opened this, in a long this, time this is not basically the details for this for the chambers are however they are labeled plus their house if they belong to one and how long that since they've been opened uh, the first chamber you bought was known as a royal uh, chamber it has not been opened for 150 cycles. You bought that for some amount. Uh, the next one you bought was the trans... Oh, no, did you let this one go? The transcendental room? We bought that was the second one. one. I bought that. Okay, so that was unopened for 12 cycles, recently collected from the academies. Um, this storage chamber seems to belong to the state and doesn't belong to any of the uh, houses on Magi. It may have belonged to some sort of uh, business at some point. It has not been opened for four cycles, starting at 700. And we don't know anything else. Negative. It's, it's, it's a storage container that has been opened for four cycles. It belonged to the outer districts, uh, some sort of residency there. It doesn't belong to an official house, so some sort of organization or business. 700, sure. Bink, 710. Um, they're gonna go for the first, the counter bid will be to 770. So 771. Uh, the next immediately goes to 785. 786. The, the, they go to 915. 916. You fucking troll. <laughs> the, so the audience uh, and uh, all other purchasers begin to uh, laugh and scowl on your behavior as Ronica makes these ridiculous bids. Let's, uh... Um, Someone finally goes to nine ninety nine. Go 
go to 1050. Uh, going once and twice and then someone makes it 1070 1100 sold to 1100 to Lady Ronick yet again that is your fifth transaction my lady she notes uh, she is addressed as such yeah yep okie dokie so let's go ahead and write that thingy. Yeah, that well, you know, I gotta, I gotta swing my, I gotta swing my puss around, you know, how that goes. No. When you, when you got a big puss, you gotta swing it around. That's not true. Are you sure? That, that's uh, how the saying goes. I heard it. I it's true for dicks. If you got a big dick, you gotta swing it around. That's not true either. Not true for a puss. <laughs> no. Okay. Mission Just accomplished. That. Um, the mysterious chamber of uh, no label has uh, been sold for 1100 This final right. chamber has recently been uh, released by the palace here in the old capital. It's said to belong to the old guard, although the ledger and information relating to details about this chamber only place it as a storage unit relevant to the uh the front of the battle here in the demilitarized zone that has now since been abandoned so unopened for approximately 90-ish cycles Starting price at 2300 credits. Twenty-three fifty. Uh, someone goes to 2700 Oof. and followed by 3100 A big boy. 31.50. Another several prices more lead you all the way up to 31.85. 32.50. Going once, twice, and sold for 32.50. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okie dokie. Yet another purchase by Lady Ronica, who at this moment cannot help but feel him slightly embarrassed from having put so many credits on the line. I'm sorry, Ronica. The auctioneer makes a comment that there will be there will be speculation as to the reason behind your spending spree. If you'd like to disclose that up front here, which Ronica. Um, Basically, it's going to give the cover that it is for a friend. It's my birthday! It's my birthday! Oh. Okie dokie. And that is all the chambers available for the auction uh, for this visitation. When more chambers come up, uh, you will be set messages, Lady Ronica, and anybody who wishes to participate further still. Okie dokie! <laughs> I think we just put a target on Ronica's back. I think she should get a... I think she, she should get a hold of her back and spend so much money. money. Right. The entirety of the commerce district would have been made, will have been made aware of the excessive purchases she made here today. Quality... Uh, quantifying as close to 30,000 credits in what all but a few seem as otherwise entirely random uh, auction chambers. <laughs> there are likely to be speculation that she has a, uh, what do you call it, a guilty uh, pleasure in making gambling's, gambles such as auction stuffs. Okie dokie. All oh, right, like there's a donkey in that one. Fuck. But hey, you know what? Yeah. Worth. 
Plus, she, she got a bunch of new bodyguards, so she's got to outfit them. So, you know, might get some good shit in there. Uh-huh. Let's take the rumors really quickly. It technically was purchased with a, cre a different creditor, right? Or... Uh, yes, it belongs to Kawarata. Kawarata, people will not know that publicly, uh, whom you're representing, okay. unless you're selling something. Yeah. Because, yeah, Ronica is the figurehead. She's the, she's the face of the uh, bid. All right, that makes sense. I mean, she could say, yeah, I bought all this stuff for uh, Kawarata. And you'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck are you telling people you fucking bought were buying shit for me? I don't know. Do they asked? Why is she letting us buy stuff for her again? Oh, why is she here? Why are we buying things, Steven? Uh, to accrue resources to help your investigation. Alright. Now why is she having to be as robust a fashion as you can describe? Well. Shinna. Uh, basically sold a lot of stuff, and if we weren't gonna use you sold the... like two things. Oh yeah, sold like two things for a lot of money. But if we weren't gonna use these credits, then we we would lose them. So it would like we uh, sold his stuff for nothing. So that's Kinda. correct. Since you're here, basically against uh, the law, as it were. Uh, you cannot use your own public credit, so you have to use someone else's line of credit. And they only provided you 3000 for your goods here, so you had to put some of your own stuff on auction, which is what you did. And unfortunately, that also means that all the accrued credits are going to be tied to that credit lender. In this case, that is another uh, resource you have here on Dark Magi, a senator within the Dark Magian Senate known as Kawarata Kage and he is tied to the resistance as a central Magian sympathizer, uh, unofficially. So it's his credit that you're increasing, ultimately. And overall, we're, we're here to investigate and question a dude named Gendo. That's correct, Gendo Fukiyage. Yeah, and Kawadata has said that if we solve this crazy, weird, anomalous problem on Dark Magi, and allow him to take the credit, he will make a Gendo meeting. What's a Gendo meeting? Gendo is a person, uh, which we would probably not be allowed to see, uh, but Kawadata being so uh, renowned uh, can easily make that happen. And Gendo is a, is a a person of interest in the, our investigation. And that's basically our only goal right now, is to find Gendo and question him as far as our uh, main mission. But Kawadata has stated that if we go and figure out <laughs> this uh, issue in Dark Magi, it's an anomalous issue dealing with uh, ancestors, AI, weirdness in a special area and we figure it out, solve it, fix it and allow Kawabata to take the credit, he will facilitate a meeting with Gendo. I see. Gendo uh, is a, an avid elder magic user. He thinks it's the stuff. He thinks it's the best magic. So some of the things I've purchased were elder magic and nature just to uh, give us other avenues by which to uh, question him with, maybe entice him, that sort of stuff. And then I bought stuff for my character to make him uh, a little bit better, I guess. And, and I guess the point too is that when we came here, we would have theoretically not been able to bring anything, so. Yeah, since you're still technically play testing, we're gonna ho ha let you keep everything you come with. But otherwise, you would probably be searched by ancestor before arriving. So you would have had to leave everything behind. Yeah, so I picked up some seals. My character does some sealing. A little bit of sealing magic. Helps so out. You guys don't have gear or weapons on you. 
Sorry, what? So, uh, you guys don't have armor or weapons on you? Uh, you have, no, they have everything. It's just, uh, for playtesting, uh, they, they're allowed to keep it. If they were a regular campaign, then I would have to have all of that confiscated before coming to Dark Magi. So this is playtesting? Is it what? Yeah. It's slightly easier because we're playtesting, yes. I see. If we were in playtesting, would we not start at level 60? I can barely hear you, dude. Um, no, uh, for this campaign specifically, um, you create a character or migrate a character that's level 60 for it, and um, you accrue uh, the power for the levels in the past, so your character is a true level 60. However, we uh, already did, already play tested half this campaign, so that's why our characters have leveled up. So I'm a, I'm especially weak right now because I'm only level sixty. Uh, yeah. Um, only in so far as you missed out on two or three trainings from the last campaign, but as far as the levels go, they don't really mean much because as far as that goes, you're missing about twenty hit points and uh, twenty spell and and technique points. It's really all you're out by if I being down that level. You lose the main thing you're down though is the training that we got that you did. Alright. Awesome, awesome. And obviously any loot or whatever that we may have gotten. Hence Shinnah selling a, 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 a set of paired items for 45,000 credits. Is Jack coming back? Could have just bought a fleet of armor oh, spacecraft. <laughs> what the flip? Because uh... we did get a couple tomes for him, but hopefully, yeah. Oh, for Jack? Yeah. Right, because he does have that direct nature stuff. Well, uh, Chief, do you have direct nature stuff spells? Yeah, I, I have a few. I, and when I check spells, at least do some stuff. I have something called uh, Draw Catalyst and something called Direct Nature. Ah, draw okay. Catalyst. It costs 90. It almost looks like that's my spell. It is my spell. Um, and then Direct Nature. So there we and go. Direct nature. Okay, so you can use tomes, stabs, wands, all that sort of stuff. So, while Jack's not here, uh, you get the tomes. And that's going to be in group loot. Group loot. Um, let's see. Uh, you can use any tome, although... There's like two that are pretty mean. Age tone, yeah, so... The arcane tone. Stay away from the arcane tone. <laughs> uh, the reason oh, is because it, it's likely cursed because it's <clears throat> got demonicness coming from it. Yeah, whatever. And so you'd have to make a resistance check every time you wanted to use it. No. -uh. Which could. Um, yeah, so I, I would stay away from the arcane tomes for now, but any of these other tomes you, you can use, uh, pretty good ones too. And like, uh, I actually have elder magic portal spells, so you having a tome of planes means you have infinite portals. I see. This also, the Tome of Betwixt is also really good. Um, it's covered depicts a human silhouette with several copies um, indented behind it to give the impression of a walking person. Like, that could be really useful. And projects a mana signature. Yeah. That's really good. 
Um, and so, yeah, when you use the, uh, well, I guess I'm looking at the tome, like the tome of Betwixt, it says durability 300. Well, what's the cost? Oh, there it is. Never mind. 45. Okay. Yeah. So it's got a cost and a durability. So you can use this one uh, four or five times. How do you repair these? Or. Do what now? I'm sorry. How do you how do you restore a tome? Oh, um, I think it has to be done with more of the ingredients used to make it. It's a whole jack. So you have to find ingredients and then give them to somebody that knows about tomes, or you can do it yourself. Um, that is currently being decided. It would probably depend on the tome. So if right they, now you need to take a tome to somebody special. Yes, yeah, so they can't be refurbished normally. Like, the way you normally repair something is by vitalizing. Uh, tomes do not work this way. Right. So you need a tomist. Yeah. You need a Magitech uh, specialist or something. And then All right, well, since okay. both of you are here, you're, you're going to share those tomes. Sure, sure them tomes. You could also look for stabs or wands or something too. Okay. Everybody needs wands. Yeah. They're just they're just nice because it allows you to use magic without using mana. Okay. Yeah, it also means you can use magic uh, that you that you otherwise are unable to use. It's is another thing. Some a lot of the tomes have unique effects. It's particularly good for, well, Saya type characters that are melee based or heavily melee based. Um, pick up a couple of direct nature spells and you can use tomes for days. Yep. For uh, yeah, sorry about being late, Josh. I, um, I had lunch with a friend. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I hope the lunch was good. Did you make, uh, did you, did you cook a stake? No, 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 um, I ended up talking to him because he wanted something on Discord, and I ne never sent him a Discord message, so he had to do that, and then I found out he was trying to like, get a bunch of 8th graders to learn how to do D&D, &D, so they are like, well, we're going to go get pizza, and I was like, yeah, I'll come along and I'll get him a pizza as well, and we can just split it. Ha <laughs> Okay, uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, unless y'all want to do something else here in the Commerce District, you can continue. Uh, there obviously, you did all of the chambers that you just purchased are unopened. Um, and then there's the regular mission stuff. Um, yeah, let's That's go. That's probably, probably where it is. Had go back, work, I mean, these containers are probably sent to Ronica's area because that's in the why well, she's probably got inner and outer districts so probably her inner districts residents so we could go back there and check out the um containers yeah let's check out the and on the way you know whatever happens maybe we see something cool maybe ronica will want to uh well, that whole gold thing where we're golds, they're golds, and you're like, hey, you're not supposed to be doing that. And we're like, I'm being paid to do what I'm told. Anyway. Yeah, but that's not cool, bro. Apparently. It's like a security guard. Who what now? Coming up to a random person and being like, hey, uh, my boss. Uh, doesn't like it when you walk by. Yeah. And you're like, I'm a security guard that works for the company. Yeah, I know, but like my boss doesn't like it when you walk by. 
So you gotta yeah. walk around then. Weird. It is weird. Uh, yeah. You guys, want, you guys want to continue to shop, or you guys want to go back to uh, Ronita's place to look at uh, our our gains? I want to so probably look at the gains we're trying to sell. I want to check out the gains. Um, what? Oh, yeah. Is there anything else to sell? I got nothing. Yeah, my none of my stuff sold, so. Okay, okay. Uh, you, you can also, by the way, uh, last session, um, I, I ended up selling um, some IP, some intellectual property. Uh, I sold I sold memories of myself in the void. Oh, yeah. Uh, making sure uh, not to show the other members or myself, uh, obviously, because... Uh, you don't want to let people know who you are or what you're doing necessarily. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so I showed them a bunch of memories of me in the void, encounters in the void, and I started the bidding at 25 credits, and they sold the memories sold for 17.50. Nice. So that's like a 10,000 percent profit. Yeah, I think it's freaking stupid, though. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you, you do need to be careful when sharing memories. Because uh, we're famous. Like, we're ultra-powerful, elite guard. Uh, we're well-known, likely, throughout Magi uh, and Dark Magi. So Rick, Some people even know your energy signature by heart. Yeah, That's or maybe true. even our... our, our behavior during combat or something so if we show too much they'll be like hey yeah i'm hoping that was that? a lucky enough little isn't that gold that looks like gold screw like oh fuck whoops did you then you fucked up oh uh, <laughs> yeah so if, if you if your character you think your character needs anything um look around like you got your armor all squared up, uh, looking for anything special, seals, armor modules, uh, uh, crests. I got, I got a couple of crests that reduce certain spell, uh, school branches. I'll order, like I'll order him some, uh, some of those sealing, um, seals. That, that we got. seal? Yeah, the ones that we got. Oh, well, yeah, Sealing yeah. magic seals. Um, let's see here. It is. We ordered a three pack. pack. So I think we should get another three pack. Uh, I don't know what type of seals they were. They were. He doesn't know. I don't know. You don't know. You don't know, dude. I don't know. There's <laughs> no. some type of seal with the seal. Shit. Shit. Um, well, no. okay, so he doesn't know if seal I entity. Give you, seal entity. If I give you absolute specs on it, do I get a bonus? Uh, yes. Can I give the bonus to Chief? Uh, no. Uh, -uh. well, the first one is. Imprison Entity Seal. It's an ext uh, uh, extreme version with, with, a, okay. with a mana cost of 186, 13 PPP, or percentage per point. And then okay. the second one is Unlock Seal Seal. Uh, and that removes transitive or etching seals uh, with a mana input of 200. Um, and that's 25 of those. I thought it was seal entity. Uh, what's that? I thought it was seal entity. Prison entity is one of them. I got three of those. Oh, okay. Prison and I got unlocked entity. seal seal 25 of those. Yeah. Apparently those are not that big of a deal. Prison so, entity. Right. I'll just give I'll just give Chief five of those. Oh, thank you. 
Okie dokie. Uh, you I'm receive sure. five skill or extra spell points. Pick one or the other. Yeah, I'll take skill. Uh, not you. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, skill or spell points? Extra skill or spell points. Oh, shit. Which one's lower? Right now. Spell points. Spiel. Five extra spell points. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, inventory. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna copy this, Chief, and then I'm just gonna put it in your, uh, unlock seal seal. You're getting five of those. We still have money left over to order three more seal entity, or, uh, imprisoned entity. Probably. Oh, I think that was 150 for three of those? Yeah. Uh, it says here it's 175. Okay. Close. Alright, we're Golm. This is Golm. Inventory. Uh, how do you have your stuff set? Uh, you have a sub race. You have familiars. You don't have any loot. I have loot. Well, you're gonna now. Only you don't get 25, you only get 5 of those, and then I'm going to give you these other three. What the crap? Oh, that's so annoying. Okay, Chief, so if you're looking at your loot... Uh, I will be. Uh, in inventory? I just made a third tab for loot. Uh, so, yeah, so you got an unlock seal seal, five of them, and it removes transitive or etching seals. And it says applied seal can only be destroyed or harvested. Uh, and that the mana input is 200. So that's important information to know because uh, this is basically telling you the grade of seal you can uh, remove. So if, if, if the seal that you were dealing with to try to remove had a, a mana input that was greater than 200, you might not be able to move it or you'd get negatives uh, to remove it. But yeah, it's important information to, to keep in there. And then the imprisoned entity seal, three of those, uh, the, the important information is that it's an extreme version. Uh, the mana cost put into it is 186, and the 13% uh, percentage per point. Because it takes an amount of time to imprison something, uh, this is going to imprison something at 13% uh, per turn. So it's like uh, seven turns, eight turns, something like that. <laughs> But Imprison Entity will allow you to imprison an orchestrate or any other kind of like uh, powerful living being within the range of the the seal's specifications as written. Unless it's and then the um, unlock seal seal, you might get somebody that hits you with a transitive seal, puts a transitive seal on you or an etching seal on you that um, nerfs you. And you're like, holy fuck, I don't want that because it's real bad and you can either deal with the checks or whatever, or you can just use the seal and go, get the fuck out of here. Uh, so there you go. And then anything else would probably be located in group loot, like if you want to use the tones and whatnot. We'll buy the... the uh, did we buy those extra ones? Extra, extra what? Those uh, seal... Uh, imprisoned well, entity. Five. 
So I'm gonna assume that yes, we buy the three imprisoned entity sealed yeah. for another 175. So we're spending another 175. Darky darky. Um. I guess Jack should have the same thing. Another 175. Jack went last session as well, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna add. Uh, and okay, so I'll add that. Right, let me just add both of these. I wonder if there's going to be any water in Dark Magi. Cause... I don't know. You just want to play with your tentacle monster. Yeah. I know, I do. Um, it's only useful in water, though. Not true. <laughs> you can use them out of the water. It's like Pokemon. Yeah, um, but um, none of the Alton. things will work. Alton, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put something in your inventory. Don't, don't move. Just, just relax. But you don't even have anything in your inventory. You don't even have a loot section. Loot. <laughs> this guy. This guy has no loot. He doesn't know how to play loot. He doesn't have single loot. Nobody plays loot anymore. Uh, <laughs> I play a mean loot. I'll tell you that right now. Treasure flux only usable underwater. Okay, so I'm now down to 15 um, of those transitive. Could summon or, uh, stuff because I gave away ten. Hull breaker only usable underwater. <laughs> well, I guess you're fucked. <laughs> Drift only usable. Just spit some. Just spit on it for a little bit. <laughs> I can. Well, I got an idea. We all gather into a circle. We piss in a puddle, and then we can summon it. I mean, right. that would that would be uh, that'd be uh, awkward. That it'll work. What counts as being underwater? Do what now? What counts as being underwater? Can you just summon a drop of water over your head, and that's good enough to cast it? Uh, no, it would have to be submerged in it. Is that difficult? Bedding would have to be underwater, with environmental components to it. Should have thought about this before I turned it into a demon. <laughs> did you did you equate that to any other liquid? You know, if it was like liquid nitrogen or anything else. That's still uh, uh, water. water. Um, for the water familiar, it would probably have to be genuine ocean water. So we can argue on the salinity, I guess, of it. I guess very yeah, humid if, air. If you're so talking humid. about lava, then that's a fire familiar. Uh, yes. <laughs> Does lava count as a fluid? <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's a semi-solid Newtonian fluid, not a non-Newtonian fluid, but yeah. like magma. Oh no! Not like <laughs> schmegma, but magma. That's why I bought the metal golem, so I can have something to play with some other Pokemon. Oh, are you thinking about uh, taking on a Covenant Chief? Oh. Or... Not at the moment. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say, the, old, the, the, the next most useful familiar, or the next most useful elemental would probably be Earth. Yeah. Wind, fire, and Earth. If you're a freaking communist. Fire is probably the most powerful, powerfully damaging, but the least utilitarian. Uh, I don't yeah. know. And then Earth is probably the most utilitarian, uh, the most useful, but probably the least powerful. Fire is for cool people. Yeah, I've looked at it. 
That's I mean, great. I always could. I still don't have my covenant. I always could go for the Earth Covenant. Wind is for hippies and monks. <laughs> you're, you're saying I'm a hippie? You're saying I'm oh, a monk? What am a monk hippie? What am a hippie monk? It could cause a lot of damage to be using wind. I think that's a paradox because a monk doesn't have any hair, but hippies have long hair. Right. So you could be I, either. I, I be a hippie monk. Well, you're either one or the other. Or well, there's those monks that have that one long braid in the middle. Are there? <laughs> we still uh, yeah, those. How They no. have one large pube. <laughs> yeah, those are like battle monks. Although technically hippies do have big beards, so you could be clean shaven on top, but have an incredibly long beard, and that could be a mixture between a hippie and a monk. That's called a communist. You know what? I'll just grow my pubes real long. I'll get those in dreads. How do you and, grow out? Uh, I can be a hippie with a bald head. Can't and grow out your pubes. With real Rogaine. Hey! Uh, Josh, you can definitely grow out your pubes. What? Why would you want to do that? You can't, I don't though. know. I'm you clean can't shaven. Go. You whoa, cannot whoa, whoa, grow whoa. out pubes. Okay. They, they only grow a certain amount. You can put a strip flat iron to it. If that were true, if that were true, I'm just saying, there would be some people out here who would like, yeah, dreads down to their ankles. So just because they can. Oh, no. I don't so, know. My, I don't know. I hear a lot of people talking about those 70 women had some mighty big bushes. It, so. You can have a big bush or whatever, but I mean, still, there, there's a limit. You're not, you're not getting, you know. You know, I think you're not getting two to three feet like human, you know, like your head hair will continuously grow, your facial hair will continuously grow, not your pubes. If you're a guy and your hair is longer than your, your Johnson, then it's too long, bro. That's an interesting point. So I guess, does that say something about bald dudes? Uh, they're, just, oh, they're, just making, they're just making sure. I want to make absolutely sure. <laughs> I meant your pube hair. I don't know. Where are we going with this? We're not going anywhere. <laughs> Do something. All right. We bought the seals. Uh, let's go look at the canister uh, the things. Right, you make your way to the mist rail. The mist rail is a dark magie uh, transportation device. There are no vehicles or transit systems other than the mist rail. Regular teleportation via alchemy is strictly circumscribed via the ancestor. So uh, instead, the dark magians use a mist rail system, which is, is that a grid like. For... Go ahead. Is that true for elder magic portaling as well? Um, elder magic portals. Unless in specified areas, will probably be blocked by ancestor. Uh, and I assume that's also true for alchemical portals. That's definitely true for alchemical portals. Okay. Unless they're banned. Okay. Um, belch. Anyway, so the Mist Rail is a grid-like system that goes over all of the major thoroughfares of Dark Magi. Dark Magi is separated into three different sections. It is a large palace-like consonant, basically. The centermost circle is the actual floating palace itself, housing the Dark Magian King and so forth, and the pavilion below that, uh, vertically, is the, uh, the experimental military slash headquarters thing of Dark Magi known as uh, Deep Core. Uh, immediately surrounding this palace interior circle are the inner districts of Dark Magi. These are the most highly sought after places to reside. This includes all of the Dark Magian academies, residencies, and just holy uh, museums and artifacts and so forth. Outside of that is the commons where Dark Magian citizens live who are not deeply connected to the inner districts or royalty. These are just simply called the outer districts and below the surface of all of these districts um, are the substreets. Substreets, again, are connected to that hollowed out center of the planet. The entirety of the planet is basically hollowed out for the purpose of huge Magian uh, technological 
megastructure called Ancestor. Anyway, so there's these huge uh, shipping lanes down below in the substreets where this excavation took place. Although it is mostly in Dark Magi closed down because Dark Magi is isolated from the rest of Central Magi uh, through a demilitarized zone. So all of its substreets are mostly inop inoperable. Anyway, so we take yeah, the... All right, go ahead. The planet has been mostly hollowed out. Uh, the planet has been mostly hollowed out and replaced by a gigantic mountain uh, megastructure known as Ancestor. The Magians, uh, through magic, obviously, figured out the composition of consciousness to extreme precision and are able to build and fortify basically a huge megastructure inside that houses the con artificial consciousness known collectively throughout Magi as the Ancestor. The Ancestor serves multiple functions, uh, such as all the defense of the planet, dimensional defenses, uh, interference, uh, all the spatial and solar system information that they need for transportation, blah, blah, blah. So basically, it's, um, it's kind of like air control, air traffic control as well. Uh, it can transport things. Everything that's operated on a magic level is done through Ancestor to keep the planet secure. Um, because if you get into the details of how magic works in the game, without this sort of consciousness to maintain the space you occupy at any given time, it is trivially easy to destroy things with magic, like causing, you know, the planet that, you know, the enemy is residing on to lose its magnetic field and then succumb to solar winds like it's truly truly simple to jeopardize any defensive structure you can put forth from a regular technological point of view unless you have a, a way of providing some sort of magic defense against it and that's what ancestor serves as but it also does all the normal tasks of you know navigating traffic uh setting alarms curfews everything that regular human modern day infrastructure does clean water making food heat all that stuff weather blah 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 anyway um so you're taking the mist trail it takes you to the substreets beneath the inner districts uh veronica then immediately is identified as having credential with which to appear here and you are given the list of the six chambers you wish to have opened. Um, the Ancestor responds by granting you a teleportation grid that will take you to each of the isolated areas. Also included in this console that you've arrived at is the ability to summon any aid that you might need or requisition some additional help by contacting firms if there's anything in your chambers that you need additional care for. I see. Right. Okie dokie. Uh, there's one more thing, actually. Uh, Sorry, what? Wait, how long does this, how long does regicide uh, play, uh, meetings usually last? Oh, this is a full length campaign. So this is going to take months. No, I mean, like individually. Uh, how long do these uh, plays last? Because, uh, Oh, yeah, how many hours? Um, we usually go from, like, four to six, something like that. Maybe eight on longer ones. You ma mind if I manage only uh, three hours, then? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that uh, be, we'll yeah. probably continue without you, depending on what we're up to at the moment. Yeah, that's a little bit, and then you'll have to come back later. That's fine by me. I That would be... That would be I mean I would go get off at two. Awesome, awesome. Okay, okay. Okie dokie. Uh, so you you have merely to uh, input the coordinates handed to you by the auction to be transported to the chamber you're uh, referring to. Which chamber would you like to start with? Uh, the Royal Chamber, the Transcendental Study, the Wardrobe, the wardrobe Chamber, chamber. Uh, Storage uh, Chamber, and the Torture Chamber. I'm sorry, Mysterious Chamber. Damn it! <laughs> Should we go by price? Cheapest to ex most expensive? Yeah, it's good. I say from... you started the Torture Chamber. Sounds exciting. 
I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're gonna see Wait, we, bought, we bought a torture chamber? No. No, you yeah, didn't. The, the mysterious Let's go to, let's go to uh... Never <laughs> let's go to cheap to... Let's, let's go to cheap to... The largest. Captain says we're going cheapest. Okay. Well, does anybody have anything to say about that? Yeah, that's fine. He's the captain. Well, Ronica says, uh... That's that's pretty cheap. <laughs> okay. We'll All right. Go. Well, mystery. You go to the storage unit. This has been unopened for four cycles. It belonged to some unknown uh, business in the commerce districts, up in the outer districts areas. And opening inside, you see uh, shortly thereafter the doors open up. And the large stone shifts aside and reorganizes itself with ancestors' power to make a doorway. Um, you are somewhat unsurprised to see that it is mostly barren. There's lots of dust inside. There are several pieces of cloth to be found scattered about. This looks like it may have belonged to some sort of textile firm. And pretty much everything in here including the shells, has been vacated or knocked aside, and mostly only thing here to find are empty vessels. Memory recovery. You oh. use a memory recovery, and you see, indeed, uh, the last big thing to have happened here took place as someone came in uh, with some sort of object in their hands, clearly looking about. They were Magian. Um... There was also two adepts with them, uh, two adept women. The person came in with some sort of wrapping around the object and stuffed it in between some sheets uh, before eventually leaving. There is no memory indicating the date with which the rest of the wares are removed. Hmm. Is that sheet still here, Venom? You wander to the exact coordinates and find a shelf full of dust-laden sheets. These textiles are fairly antiquated, many of which are deteriorating and are easy to disassemble from the touch. I say, holy shit, can you believe these sheets? No. Holy sheets. Sheet? Um... What is everyone's? Yeah, everybody, give me intel. No, get everybody give a discipline check. A discipline. Uh, give, me... Right, give me a sec to grab my computer. My a son computer is being a jackass again. No, that, that was pretty fast. That was pretty fast, Adi, but I beat you. But you got a way better to roll. <laughs> Any bonuses on this? Oh, sure. Um, if you have any bonuses towards ethereal. The ethereal. Nope. I don't think so. Uh -oh. We're fucked. And just because you have deliverance spells does not mean you have bonuses towards ethereal. Just randomly putting that out there in case somebody thought that might be a thing. That's correct. It's a... Alright. <clears throat> so it should be a no for everyone, I think. Uh, unless you're banned, this is true. I can't Give even me think a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. anything oh, to give you a bonus to Ethereum. Oh, I don't even I think rolled there's a anything to give you a bonus to Ethereum. You rolled a what? Uh, 16 total. 16 total, okie dokie. Um, everybody immediately feels their mana signatures become disturbed as you approach this corner of the room. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, oh. Ooh. You oh. instinctively step away, immediately feeling the after effects of depletion affect the parts of your body exposed in uh, exposed in range of whatever the item was. Ooh, I feel filthy. There's something over there. You're somewhat so surprised to find that Ancestor has not taken some sort of aversion to the ethereal presence. Ethereal, uh, for back reference, uh, is a type of mana. There are three versions of mana. Mana is the regular energy. The more condensed, more potent version of it is called ether. 
which is allows you to stronger uh, channel stronger energy levels to get higher stats. The most potent form is ethereal. It is uh, the most potent uh, and basically uh, what, what's the word? You can't it can't be diluted. It's very pure and it has the very corrosive effect of depletion where it will uh, rob anything that it exposed to of any positive energy signature. So if, if you experience becoming depleted, you will lose your ability to channel mana until it wears off. Anyway. Ouch. Um, so we I'll, start, I'll start channeling the uh, Necroforce. Necroforce is being channeled. <laughs> I don't have that ability, so I guess I, don't, I can't channel mana. Uh, it only affects orifices that it's exposed to. So at the moment, only a hand or a foot would have been exposed to it. So you can still use your other or uh, receptors. Oh, I'm gonna not I'm gonna not be in there. It's filthy. Okie dokie. Yeah, I got a twelve. I'm gonna smell it. Can I smell it? Is, you is can there smell a... ethereal? But but I can smell the. I can smell the depletion, though, right? I can smell the filth. Uh, negative. Oh. Is it, it flammable? Well, that's, um, that's just you, Shin, nah. Huh? All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, what about my uh, Magitek visors? Can I see mana with that? Uh, yes. Okay. I should be able to see Ethereal, then, with it. The visor is detecting an extremely high reading of ether energy. Which uh, you use with your Magitek to interpret as reading for Ethereal. The visor very likely does not have a setting to uh, recognize Ethereal. All right. Um, then from a distance, can I carefully unwrap it with telekinesis? Uh, telekinesis will become depleted if it's exposed to Ethereal. Mm, really? What about spiritual telekinesis? Mm -hmm. Would it's I go up and remove the cloth? Okay, so it removes the cloth. <laughs> you want to remove the cloth? Yeah. Okie dokie. Uh, you yeah. search around inside, exposing yourself to the depletion. Make a resistance check. Resistance? Sure. 12. You were the onset of the effects of depletion before you find the small object wrapped in something peculiar in the memory. You pull it away and find that this is indeed the source of the uh, ethereal. It'll be you have to make another check in moments if you do not do something with the hazardous material. Uh, give me a second to think. Um, hey, Kronos, you usually know about this stuff. What could I cover it in to make it not irradiate me? It's radioactive? Uh, not really, but it's close enough. Ethereal is going to function like that for the purposes of this section. Oh. Um, well, I'd find the densest matter you couldn't find. So, you know, Prison lead, depleted uranium, um, neutronium would probably be the best. Or, but I believe it. the uh, Deliverance School can alleviate depletion. Is that a thing? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yeah. So just use your uh, Deliverance School magic to do it. I know that I'm a Spellcraft Lord of Three. Um, I don't what have, about I don't have those spells, though? What does this object look like? The do object it like... itself is wrapped in some odd uh, threads. Underneath, as the object is unfolded, you find a crystalline structure where the light inside of it seems to be fluctuating. Uh, what is your Warcraft lore? Um, max minus plus one. Minus one. A max. 
Okay, still Max. Okay, you yeah. immediately identify this as a crystalline soul. This is a rare material. Um, this is actually belongs to the ultra rare uh, category of materials. It is very low abundance because it is aged for decades. Well, it I'll read. Can be used to strengthen or serve as the basis for imprisoning or in or imprinting a soul to an object. Interesting. I relay that to the captain, and I begin to imprison this object in a seal. Okie dokie. Uh, I was going to ask if I could use that magic to, you know... Go ahead. The magic that Kronos mentioned. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, sure. What What is your deliverance uh, magic spells? Do you have any deliverance spells? Uh, how would I check that? Go to your spells and check each spell by the school and look for deliverance. Okay, okay let me see. Uh, near, 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 near. There might also be an icon of a banjo or Burt Reynolds or John Boyd. That's not true. Ned Baby <laughs> or Henry Fonda. Not true either. Or John Boyega. What about the John Claude Van Damme? <laughs> Are you using the imprison object spell? The deliverance spell. Uh, do you have any? Yeah, I do. I have one. Which one is it? Uh, passage immortality spell. Oh, it's called. What's it called? Um, oh, name the... oh, the name is deli Deliverance. Huh. Yeah. Oh, rip. Oh, so rip. this is the, um, yeah, yeah so that's, that's, uh, that's just supposed to be a presage spell. So it presage is uh, immemorial, so it's just called presage. I don't know why it's called deliverance in the name. It's weird. Intermediate level. Uh, so the one below that is called remembrance. That's the one that actually grants immortality. So you could cast remembrance on you yourself or your allies if you want them to be immune to the effects of ethereal. I'll cast it on myself. It's going to be pretty expensive, though. Do you see it? Do you see how much it costs? Yeah, it costs yeah. 80 mana. It costs 80 mana to presage it. But that you, the way deliverance spells work is they have to be presaged. The way deliverance... The, what deliverance is, is you're basically be beckoning Casilios, the universe, to perform deeds for you. And you have to presage some of these statements first. So you presage with the presage spell, then you cast remembrance which is the actual spell you're trying to do. And both of those costs have to be added together. Okay, so how much would it cost in total? Uh, what is the cost of the Remembrance spell? Uh, the Remembrance spell, 200. Okay, so the Presage is 80, so it's going to be 280. Let me see how much fun I have. I'll, I'll junction pass that with you. So that, cuts it to, that cuts it to 140. Anybody else with the junction cast this? I could throw... Yes. Uh, Just say yes. I could throw... Yeah, I'll junction pass in two. Yeah. yeah. That's one, two, three, four. Chief? Yes? Five. Okie dokie. How many is it again? Are you guys doing? 
you guys can pay however much you feel like paying. Uh, if if all all five of us are in on it, uh, then we then each of us just pay fifty six month. Fifty six. All right, I'm I'm okay with fifty six. All right, all of us are paying fifty six. Okie dokie. Worth fifty six monitor to get not depleted. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Uh, this is assuming that um, Immemorial Immortality works in a small AoE, which I'm not sure that it does. You well, might have to use the target, Alton. Even if it's just for him. Whoever's handling the material. Oh, uh, I've already put it in a seal. Uh, if you're putting it in a seal from a distance, then you don't need to be handling it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, put the manor back then? Yeah. Alright. Okie dokie. So, if it's sealed, I can just pick it up? You can pick up the seal, that's correct. I'll pick it up and look back towards the others. Can I okay. keep this? Okay. The transitive seal uh, contains the crystalline soul, but you still notice the effects of the ethereal in the area. It is then clear that the wrappings themselves had more to them than meets the eye. Oh shit, the wrappings. The wrappings. Uh, so what I... is everyone's uh, magecraft lore? Mine is Damn it, dog, do you ever three. Not try to bite off my toes? Two. Two? Yep. Two and what? Who else? Three. Three. Okay. Uh, what's going on? What is your magecraft lore? Uh, Mishik. One. Okie dokie. So that should be impossible, I think. I think that should at least be a two. That probably was not updated correctly. So go ahead and turn that into a two if it's a one. Okay, yes, did. Okie dokie. Um... So there's a three? Who had the three? Me and Chris. I did. Ulta. Sadi. Okie dokie. No. You quickly... Put together that the wrappings might be filaments of ethereal substrate. These have to be spe specially manufactured and are also very low in availability on Magi. This is a super rare uh, ingredient that is aged for cycles. It also has a spatial component to it in that it exists in abstract space during its construction and is going to be vulnerable to spatial anomalies should you execute them. So if you perform elder magic around it or come close to you know high gravity, then this material's uh, uh, we call it a volatility may give. I put that in a seal as well. Okay, there are four strands of ethereal substrate. Or four mm -hmm. filaments. Mm -hmm. And the crystalline soul as well. And a crystalline soul. Oh, that's correct. And mm -hmm. the soul is contained in what? That's another uh, sealing, uh, a transitive seal that should not put it in. It was originally okay. wrapped in the ethereal fil filaments. Oh, okay. So, the others. so, can I keep this uh, soul crystal thing? I think I have a use for it. For it. Yeah, go if for you it. want it, open. you may merely request it from your allies. Yeah, Shinnan's got it. So, if you want it, yeah. Okay. 
please go ahead and put it in your inventory and make sure it's note that it's in a transitive seal. How many seals you got, Shinna? Transitive. I used two out of my six high grade transitive seals for this. Alright. I'll give you five more. I have twenty. Cool. Oh fuck. I have to, I have that same uh, spell, so we can trade off if you ever running low on mana. Nice. Right. It's one of the greatest things about alchemy. Is you you can get a spell that just creates ceiling meat fields. So, uh, Josh, what was the item again? Uh, so there crystalline are two items. Soul. No. There's a single crystalline soul. And there's four ethereal substrate filaments. Yes, you have a crystalline soul in a transitive seal. That'd be cool. I don't know. Necro Seraphim still. I can put it in this uh, Void Sword. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fucking sweet. That would be dope. Fucking sweet, dude. You're, you're not gonna, you know, you're just not going to stop until you have sex with a Necro Seraphim, are you? Dude, I've already had. You, That's the whole you, reason we go to Necria. He got the last one pregnant. That's why he ran what away. <laughs> no, he thinks he thinks he did, he's jealous because he couldn't he didn't have it he didn't have the stuff he couldn't get it up it oh. didn't work it's okay it happens to all of us into him, but it was into his buddy Lumos and he's just jealous real so <laughs> I just I, I had every opportunity but they just weren't into me and uh, I couldn't really perform even if they were and Lumos sucks. <laughs> Because they were all about him, and he was like, well, I mean, I guess. <laughs> You'll sit on that fucking staff. Fuck all right, man. I put it in my loot section. Stick That's that why I, Lloyd I do staff in your ass. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Jam. All right. I guess we can search the rest of this container. Let's go. Find everything. Uh, as mentioned before, the shelves are mostly empty, certainly dust slated. Uh, there's lots of cloths everywhere, probably samples oh, for the rest of whatever the business may have used them for at some point. But otherwise, it appears to be completely empty. All right. By popular uh, demand, we'll go see the mysterious one next. Oh, oh okay, great. Finally, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> We're all going to die. Um, you open up the chamber. Um, you quickly identify that a symbol of the old guard is on it. Uh, as mentioned, it has not been opened for 90 cycles. 90 cycles. As you're about to open it, Ronica speaks up. Is there any potential threat assessment on your part, Guardsman? She says aloud. On what? This and is from the... In this chamber. No. I mean, it's been locked in for 90 cycles. Whatever was in there, it's uh, probably... Uh, I don't know. I've been told, as says Ronica, that some spells can be laid to mature over the course of many cycles. Very Is that a possibility in your, in your opinion? Very smart outlook. This thing well, is true, but we're going with the jack-in-the-box technique uh, because we don't really have the time to be doing that kind of analysis. So we're just going to jack-in-the-box it. <laughs> you, you've heard of this technique. It's very, uh, very fine technique, very precise. Very, if it makes it is a, dangerous and it is risky, but it, it, it is a quick technique. Yeah, I'm sure you've performed it. Yes. 
the, uh, the old Jack in the Box. You'll have, you'll have to excuse me, but this sounds rather reckless. I can't confess to having personal experience with such a technique. I'm willing to play the sacrificial pawn. Well, be before we do that, we have a we have a, a Shinna that can detect uh, demonic. Uh, energy, so if there's any kind of demonic spells around he Chambers, you have no uh, insight as to what's inside them. This is dark magian uh, design. You'd have to probe yeah. them pretty drastically to appear what's inside them. Um, can I um... Ooh, I have a probe these, these, are, these are large chambers made out of some kind of material. That's right. Uh, these are the same ancestor base mater material that the rest of the palace is made out of. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, it's impervious to what? Well, it's, it's impervious to normal things like influxes in pressure or temperature. Um, but it also is going to have... It's going to be linked up to uh, ancestor with a, with a, a link of some kind, so it's going to have it's a piece of magic tech that has connections to ancestor, so ancestor is able to monitor it. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'm going to try to spiritualize uh, through it and see if I can see what's in it. You see a long corridor, and at the end of it, there is a string of lights above, standing about 12 meters in height. There are apparently lots of equipment, or at least not equipment, but fixings to the wall where equipment could be hooked up to be made to hang from. The room, however, is otherwise entirely empty but for a mon a faint mana synergy sense on the far end of it. Um and around the door or entry there doesn't seem to be anything strange or odd trap like. Nope, not that you can tell. Uh, I mean, I'll relay exactly what I've seen and all that and be like, yeah, I, I don't think there would be a problem with you opening the door right now. The minus signature. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Alton says if they want, he'll stand in front seeing that he um, is almost essentially a frontline tanky man, so. Does yeah, the shield? Take a take of does the mana signature seem to be orchestrate in nature, or...? Uh, mana signatures are always orchestrate, unless they're... Yeah, I guess they're mostly always orchestrate, yeah. So it's not a familiar, but yeah. Anyway, um... Blah, blah, blah. Hi. Yeah, so the door opens up, Ancestor uh, reshapes the stone to make a doorway sizable enough for the rest of the party to enter. Who wants to go in? I'm already in. I can't get in any further. I will go in. Uh, you're I'm immediately... Already... Oh, do you want to solidify then? I'm already, I'm already in there and I'm already spiritualized. Do you want to solidify and stop being a spirit? No. Okay. Well, the rest of you are hit with a foul stench. Ooh. The stench of body fluid. <laughs> I took your shit and then I spiritualized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Alton cracks a joke of, I wonder if I had a sex party in here and decided to leave all their fluids around. I don't know. Hey, whatever it is, there is clearly some sort of ar uh, repugnant organic uh, residue here. Shit, nah, what have you been doing in here? Oh, what the hell are you talking about, Captain? It's being this really cool. Has Shinna oh, right. written all right. over it? Yeah, I've never seen it. Right right. Right. You can always tell by the smell. <laughs> like, oh, what's that? Uh, I think Shinna has been here. <laughs> okay, right, okay. Well, um, you guys, you guys got the stink nose. You guys are like, oh. Mm, 
I immediately like, I take like, Ronica oh, yeah. out and back with me. Okay. He backs away, holding her face and uh, nose <laughs> with a furrowed eyebrow. All right, I'll I'll go inside. I'll be channeling Necroforce and sorry, doing a memory recovery. Um, you quickly go in and notice the energy signature and see a man. He is chained to a wall, still breathing, naked and emaciated. He has several seals on his body. Each hat now are abundantly giving off a uh, signature of their own now that you've stepped in proximity. His eyes are closed. Hmm. Bad, baby. What's the memory recovery tell me? Uh, the memory recovery shows a collection of torture with several apparatus with uh, Magitech instituted by Dark Magi during the war. Uh, this appears to have been a lab of some kind or a torture room. In the memory, there are hints or details that you could describe as demonic in nature, as it looks like demonic essence was apparently attempted to be extracted at some point or another. Any I do a... memories have a, are a myriad in nature. Apparently, Casilios has deigned to remember many things about the transpiring stuff occurring in this place. A full in-depth analysis will require uh, a full crew of experts to parse out the information uh, enshrined here in this memory. Can I do a lore check to see if I recognize this person from the Celestial? You don't recognize this man. He appears to be Central Magian. Okay. I, um, can <laughs> I communicate with the guy and ask uh, Orchestra, are you able to hear us? He makes no acknowledgement. He has several etching seals on his body that are still active. Um, can th those be probed? Uh, yes, they can. Cool. Uh, uh which one, there are, let's see, one of them's on his neck, uh, the other one's on his chest, one of them's on his forehead, and, and I'm gonna say another one's on his chest. The neck. Did you want to... Uh, you quickly identify the seal on his neck to be a action limiter, which is disabling his ability to make noise with his voice. Cool. Um, let's use one of our seals to... Re the... Actually, can I just rebuke this, uh, rebuke this seal? Rebuke? Yeah, rebuke it. Negative. It's not... Uh, covenant based. Okay. Then, um, can I use yeah, let's just yeah. remove the seal. Uh, how do you want to do that? Use one of our seals we bought to remove seals. Uh, you use the unlock seal thing? Okay. Yeah. Uh, which one do you want to target? The one on his neck. Let me hear his voice. Okie dokie. Yeah. The seal comes off, it breaks. There is an immediate after effect as the seal comes loose, uh, creating a small explosion and setting the place uh, ablaze with a flame. Uh, uh -oh. What is everybody's endurance? Can I control the flame? Uh, the affirmative. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not channeling or anything, so one. I mean, one. with uh memory catalyst i would have five endurance you okay yeah he had a little pee there but he seems so <laughs> yeah dad says he's getting better because now it's only like little dribbles where he's having some like oh um... goes, but... yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so what was I don't know. Do? Jack, mute yourself. I was gonna uh, see if I can uh, direct the fire outwards with my uh, with my elementalism. You want to direct it outwards to spread it? Like outside of the the. It's what? emanating from the seal that just broke. Oh, okay. Um. I guess uh, just can I, uh, can I extinguish it? Control it to extinguish? Yeah. yeah. It's extinguished immediately. Uh, the fires inflict no uh, damage aside from this small scorch on his neck now. Uh, as it burns, uh, the man uh, gasps as his eyes open up. Seems to have been unaware that you had arrived prior. His eyes are widened as he looks about frantically. Um, let's see here. I will probe the the one yeah. on his head, forehead. Uh, he he squirms away, kicking his feet as you come close. Orchestrate. We mean you no harm. And I show hands like, like, we don't mean anything. I put just up my up. hands in an uncertain posture. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't uh, mean to startle no, you. He makes no uh, noises. Uh, apparently unaware that the seal uh, that had, uh, disabled his vocal box has been removed. And he simply stares, frightened. You can speak now. I won't hurt you. Probably. Uh, as he's doing that, I will cast Gift of Haran, which gives him a hundred uh, life force back. Okay, try, to okay. yeah, a, try to the heal him up. Try to heal him up. Disappears. Oh, hey, come on. Eat trail, dude. Hail, Orchestra, he says. Hail. Andy! Hail. How long have you been here? Since the Civil War. Andy. Well over in your cycles. Sorry? Orchestra, you've been here well over a hundred cycles now. Hi. Seems as seems fitting as such. It certainly feels that way. Right. Well, I assume you have news from the front. Might as well. It'd be easier for me to just share the memories. A lot has yeah, reached out to you with his hands bound. I, do you mind? I mean, you no harm. <clears throat> Can we uh, check? Well, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, if you did, I couldn't stop you, could I? Well, before we do that, let's get you released from here. Okie dokie. You want to remove the bindings to the wall? Yeah, let's inspect all these... Uh, Inspect what these seals do first and see if there's any bo more booby traps. Uh, probing one of the seals reveals it to be a disruptor seal. His mana is entirely disrupted. Uh, one of them is a life force uh, limiter seal that has been working uh, to grant him life force and perpetually keep him alive, although he is unable to vitalize. Let's keep that one on in him. Uh, on him. And the other is a receptor seal, which is disabling his receptors further in his hands. It's preventing him from casting spells and. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah using mod, casting spells, and. So let's remove the, the dis one. disrupting one first before you remove the. Uh... The other ones, and then we'll take unb unbind him, just in case he does anything fishy. 
Uh, as you remove the second seal, it also blows up with a uh, sizable flame erupting from it. Get it! I'll do the same extinguish. You immediately extinguish the flame, and it has no uh, girth to it whatsoever. It immediately presents itself as a small flicker of ember. Do the, the last thing I did last time. Same. Um, yeah, I also did the same, giving him back more life force. All right, and his shackles. Um, was the cipher function on the shackles as well? They appear to be uh, not mono uh, structures at all. Do they have any markings on them? Negative. Okay, then um, I'll use telekinesis to break them off of them. Well, wait, are they are they padded and fuzzy? Uh, yes. Oh wait, I'm interested. Don't break those. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I probably have the key. Take them off slowly. I, I, I use my personal key. Does it work? <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, these are great. I'm going to take them home. I, uh, I put them away <laughs> in the prison wallet. Okay, one prison wallet uh, donation later. I just found padded, fuzzy uh, ankle shackles. Thank you, Penna. I nod. <laughs> well, orchestrates, stand up. For the first time in a hundred cycles. I'll try, he says, uh, f trying to find the strength in his arms. He wobbles together over time as he leans against the wall before eventually sliding back down. Pardon me. It seems I've forgotten altogether. Get your vitalization on, man. I think that... that's right. I can vitalize we'll once more. We'll cover you. Though, I have little confidence in myself to do that either now. Could what? you... Could you guide me? What's your name? He looks over at each of you. Ren. Ren. Ren! Man, my name is Sadi. Or er, shit, my name is. Uh, <laughs> oh, I know Jam. you. <laughs> my name, my is name is Jim Jam. My name is Stimpy. And your name isn't Stimpy. What the fuck? My name is Stimpy. My name is Jim Jam. This is Altu, and Monterey Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and this uh. This guy's um this guy's a freak. I forget his name. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Shit, no. I am, or sir. Oh sure. Those are our fake names. I am Bernard the Fifth, the last of thy name. Noise. Anyway, he's asking to be guided through vitalization. This is basically what you do when you're teaching children to learn how to do it initially. Oh, I'll teach him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you sit down, take a moment, and relax as you begin your vitalization chant, uh, trance, uh, with his hands in yours. I'm going to watch him very in case he tries to do something. Like, Okey dokey. Okay. What the fuck is he gonna do? He doesn't even remember how to eventually is an, uh, able to execute his vitalization, and you see return to him his clothes and his physical, I mean, his physique and his hairdo. Oh, snap. He looks to be a central Magian soldier of some kind. Look at him. Were you part of uh, the Royal Guard at the time? That's right. I still am, I'd like to say. <clears throat> well, 
Alright, right, so, right. hello, comrade. You don't mean to say that in such a way to imply, sir, that there is no longer a royal guard, do you? Well, Magi still stands divided between Central and Dark Magi now. Dark Magi? Huh. Hmm. Both reside on the initial planet, separated by the demilitarized zone. And I share them with the memories. Okie dokie. I never would have oh, guessed miasma. that name. Schmegma? Sorry? You know, the miasma, the schmegma. Whoa! <laughs> that's, that's what Dark Magi is. It's completely coated in schmegma. I mean, miasma. Yeah. Thick. Well, magic schmegma is, is pretty is pretty toxic. I wouldn't go anywhere near it. Oh. <laughs> so once the, um, the uh, civil war was finished, uh, King Neos and Magi quickly ended the celestial war. Which brings us to day. But unfortunately, um, a great tragedy befell. Magi, King Neos was assassinated by an unknown person. Neos is gone. And I've been here the whole time, he says. The man has an uh, inevitable breakdown as he realizes the life he's left behind has probably deteriorated and his countrymen have fallen as he's languished in this tomb. Great, we depressed uh, him. Whoa, 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 uh, buddy. Uh, Alton will um, take off his helmet back and serves his face and um, bends down to um, put his arm around him. Which, you know, Alton is a high regard seeing that Alton only shows his face to true fighters. Oh, my great king. <clears throat> I must have failed you. Did he? Did he share anything? I can't hear you, bro. Did he share anything with the enemy? Did he share anything? Uh, you yeah. have to ask him. Uh, well, then I ask him, babe. Well, All I right. couldn't really well hide anything. I'll say that much. Hiding from the Dark Magians is impossible. The magics they use... They're compelling, I'll say. So you... Then, uh, then you definitely failed, yeah. You failed. <laughs> Alton, Alton looks up at him. Looks, looks over to his commanding officer. If... Sir, if you may... May I take him out front and, uh... Show him my sword techniques. Who are you talking to? Dude, he's talking to the captain. To me? Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he refers to as his commanding officer. No, no, let's just... It's... It's... It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. <laughs> emotions are high right now. We, we, uh... We we are losing sight of of what uh, what what truly has happened to this this innocent right here. But um, you know, his memories will be searched once he goes back to Magi. I'd say that telepathically amongst them all. Well, Except, why can't he know that? Uh, Ronica comments. It looks like his memories are already searched. This is probably why he was unable to provide any cover for any intel that he may have had. Okay. Huh. Can't you, like, uh, lock away your memories or something? Uh, you can put up psychic barriers, but against a uh, practitioned ghosting specialist, you stand no chance. Especially if they have you in isolation and can try as many times as they want. Or sorcery. Yeah, you could just, you know, put possess him entirely and then just con mind control him to tell you what you want. Which, by the way, 
nobody has any reason to believe yet that he is not currently still under. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we only... How many seals did we remove? Two? Four. Four? All of them? Oh. Yeah. That one. Okay. Uh... Tell me, orchestra, does your uh, mana still feel disturbed? He takes a heavy breath and leans backward, resting his arms down. Yes, he says. You missed you might... one. Missed one? Is it in, in my the... body? In my body, he says. Oh, shit. There's a seal in your body? Correct. Like, up your duty? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, no. Captain, this is for you. We got, we got third job for shit, no. <laughs> Well, let me get my Let's probing. <laughs> let me get my probing bot. Hold on. <laughs> hey, uh, right, what now? Ulta, can you use your uh, wind to search his butt? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's airtight. <laughs> if, I had, if I had water, I could. <laughs> Alton pulls out the bucket of water that he always keeps with him. Here you go. That is a joke. Alton does not keep No, if I, if I was a water elementalist, I, I definitely could. We can just ask for a cavity search. <laughs> Alton asks, so where is this inside of your body, if I could be curious? I mean, if I do it, I'll definitely eat my cat. That's, that's quite the question. Don't you think it's rather dull? Why not I guess? <laughs> <laughs> Can I use my Magitek visor with x-ray and scan his body? Uh, there's a second monocentric coming from his brain. Oh. Is that a good or bad thing? Sad puppy. Well, if that seal is anything like the other seals, when you removed it, it's going to blow up. Can we deactivate the seal? Uh, yeah, you see. With activate? What kind of with, seal with, is with it? With activate? Oh, with the, 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 activate, refer, the yeah. calibration spell? Yeah. Uh, hmm. I don't know. What kind of seal is it? Uh, it's an applied seal. Oh, well, you can use unlock seal. But it'll explode. No, it won't. Yeah, it will. All right, how about this? Um, <clears throat> I'll power up uh, probably to, like, a four. I'll use telekinesis to yeah, apply seal to uh, put, uh, put a bubble around it, then deactivate it, then so prevent the explosion from hurting him. Yeah, so if you want to, if you yeah, you can you can transplant the applied seal, but you'll have to have another applied seal. Otherwise, it's going to be destroyed. Um, can I put a seal in a seal? Uh, no. But I have a Russian doll. <laughs> Too bad. Why? If, you yeah, want, if, you, if you just remove the seal, it's going to detonate because it's going to destroy the sealing medium. Uh, if you transplant it, you will. Uh, it's going to be active on whatever you transplant it to. Is that what, what harvested means? Yeah. How will we okay, deactivate I then? Harvest the medium. Sorry, what? I thought that meant you just harvest the medium. Let me see here. Destroyed our harvest. Oh wait, um, cast. No, I don't think you. I don't think you can ever get the medium back. Hey Jack, cast your immortality spell on him, and we'll remove it. Immortality spell. Oh yeah. Good point. Uh, 
Wait. He's, he says, well, give me like, uh, alright, I should be good. My mana's back to where it should be. Uh, can anyone help me split the cost of it? Yeah. Well, I'll do it. Uh, yeah. Also, I look at the orchestrate, and I tell him, I'm going to need you to stop channeling. We're going to cast a spell on you, and we're going to remove that spell with the seal. What, what are you casting? Immortality. What's in, immortality? Yeah, straight up immortality, yeah. yeah. What is that? What's, where is it from? deliverance spell. Before okay. before you yeah, do that, uh, can heal limbs? Uh, does that well, that doesn't count for heads, right? No, it does. Yeah. You can heal his head after exploding it if you want. Well, guys, it's only cost thirty spell points. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spend that much mana. You feel like having your head blown off. <laughs> <laughs> you think he'll blow his head off? I mean, I rather so, only him can revive him if he does that, though. You could, yeah. Again, you can just transplant the seal to another applied seal if you have one, and then it's fine. <laughs> I don't have a spell for that, so. <laughs> yeah. Unlock. Wait, do seal I have effect. any applied? I think I have some applied seals actually. Come on. <laughs> yeah, if you have an if you have an applied seal, you can transfer it with the unlock seal spell. Oh okay, okay. That's that's easier and less dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> but we just don't know what the seal is yet. Um. So you know, you can probe it. I want to probe it. Want to want to decipher function. It is an applied seal with a conjuration spell attached to it. Conjuration. Um. Is the only school that has conjuration elder magic, or does something else have elder uh, magic? High magic, yeah. Conjuration is from high magic? That's correct. In this case? Uh, yeah, you to... Um. We want. I don't really want it. And what I wrote, I get fun. Uh, okay, if you don't want to waste the applied sealing medium, you can just cast the immortality thing. That will also work just as well. Uh, I think it's easier just to transfer the seal to an applied seal. Okay, so I use it even if it's not that good. I just use it on somebody. Okay. So uh, uh, you tr transplant the conjuration applied seal. It is meant to detonate if it is uh, removed. Okie dokie. Uh, uh, total function? Yeah, that's pretty much its only real function. If the state of the seal is damaged or, or anything like that, uh, it is meant to detonate. Okie dokie. The seal is removed, although the man is none the wiser. Seems like to me he was either possessed... That his memory's altered. Uh, no, he just has no idea what the fuck you guys are doing. Oh. Detonate upon what? Uh, uh, rugged interaction. We just performed magic surgery on you. Don't don't worry. There is a something inside your head. It was disturbing, uh, disturbing your mana. And uh, tell me. About it seems, it says, different now. Although I can't really, you'll have to forgive me, I can't really take what you tell me on faith alone. Understood. As, as long as... I'll put hand out. Uh, if you want to sync him with memories to uh, walk him through what you did to him, he may believe you. Yeah. Okie dokie. That's quite a technique. I've never seen that done before. You're quite practiced, aren't you? Who are you individuals? Citizens of Dark Magi, says Ronica. 
I'm part of the volunteer dark magic brigade. <laughs> yep. Uh, I am me. Gold Ronica, bodyguard. Uh, Ronica takes a moment to say, this chamber you're in was repossessed by the state. It was then sold off as part of commerce and dark magi to the highest bidder. Oh, she was about to say, I own you, punk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask the question. We, I own the, we now own this chamber, she says. And pauses, and all of its contents, she says. <laughs> oh, fuck. I knew fuck Electronica. You. Sorry? I said I knew Electronica. Okay. Alton <laughs> <laughs> is having second thoughts about why he ever agreed to do this. Because you're an elite guard member belonging to the strongest kingdom in the freaking galaxy, and they assassinated your king. That's why. Ah, good point, good point, good point. <laughs> You're a drone. I knew I should have just gotten hired at Starbucks and said, <laughs> I'm going to sacrifice my life for a bunch of nobles. Oh, it's called Magic Bucks now, and it's, and it's called Joshua Bucks. <laughs> uh, I look oh, over man. to Veronica and tell her, my lady, should we get this POW back to Central? Can you say that <laughs> loud? Um, no, tell telekinetically. Protocols yeah. don't place this as a mission priority. He should be mm. captive until we're able to release him uh, upon the success of the mission if possible. However, <laughs> you of course are in charge, guardsman. Look well, at the captain. Uh, Mentally and ask him what's his what's your course. Oh. <laughs> um. Jesus Christ. Um. <laughs> I guess we can. Ha I guess another. I guess he could be a uh, of use to us in a meat shield kind of way. <laughs> um. He's here, he's, he's, stand out front. He's, he's, what am I doing? It doesn't matter, you're doing a great job. He's, he's got some loyalty to us, and... He got me, that's right, you did a great job. Uh, yeah, yeah okay. I, I, I agree with Ronica. Uh, if he slows us down, then... Then... <clears throat> We could just send him back to the um, the uh, initial hideout, yeah. Ronica's uh, the one in the outer districts, I think, and uh, kind of give him some rehabilitation there. Not really uh, holding him captive per se, but look, you've been out of the system for quite a while. Don't really want you running around. You know, you have a bunch of Imagine to look after you, teach you stuff. That might be a good area until we're done. I copy, says Ronica. Maybe give him a memory of a way to the... I don't know. Well, I mean, Ronica can just call up an aide or something to come get him and take him back or whatever, you know. Uh, no I don't think that's something we need to actually do. Okay. I, I suppose it's possible he could run off or whatever, but and then it's like, well, hey, these really cool fucking dudes here are pretty powerful with seals. They just fucking took me out of a box and let me go. And now I'm I'm living I'm living the best life I can. <laughs> Do we feel the need to put his condition under any scrutiny? Says Veronica. I mean, we we do, but I don't think we have that kind of. That's not really our priority right now. We Firm. definitely do that. So, uh, do you have anybody in the uh, that that has those kind of skills? Um, can I? Amongst the the list of the resistance who has sorcery specialty, we'd have to hire a contractor. Oh wow figured 
Does mutate consciousness reconstitute um, or leave any signs of maybe uh, fuck, what's the term? Uh, simulation? Um, if you're fabricating or extracting a memory, if you're extracting memories, you can put those memories under scrutiny yourself to see if they're part of an assimilation. Um, but that's that's going to be based on your competency. It's not a guaranteed science. But in general, if um, I'm if I don't want to go through that process, but in just in case I want to revive a compromised consciousness tainted by ghosting arts, could I do that? If you reconstitute a consciousness that's been tainted no. by ghosting arts, yeah, that'll be fine. That there's no harm in that. But you're you're talking about something different from sorcery. Sorcery assimilation is a pending of new information permanently to their memories. Okay. That has to be removed first. Otherwise, whatever you're reconstituting doesn't erase it. Well, okay, hold on. Oh. Spells, ghosting, alter integrity. Yeah, um, I don't have anything else for uh, to remove that. Yeah, assimilation is not as easily detectable as possession or domination. So yeah, it's it's going to be difficult. Okay. You there, you have thorough reason to suspect that possession was very likely not performed though. Because during that time, sorcery was not really quite as robust as it is now. And unless this person was of particular importance to the defense of Central Magi, then he, his mind would not have been a priority. What was his name again? Ren. Ren is the name he gave you. Master Ren, what was your uh, standing, one may ask, in the Central... Uh, Royal Guard. Were you an uh, officer? Uh, negative. I was an anti-demon specialist. Ooh. Interesting. I, uh, telecopy Pathically say, do you think that could be of use to us in this mission? Uh, negative. I'm more confident. I would know more about the Arcanes than probably pretty much anyone on this planet, Captain. I wouldn't doubt that, Shinno. Sir Shinno. <clears throat> But um, I do agree. We should. He is a, a royal guard member. So we should at least get him to safety. Then, when mission allows, take him back to central. Agreed. Veronica, if you could somehow uh, provide transportation for him, that would be. Well, I'll arrange good. it shortly. I'll contact headquarters and have an escort sent to this substreet. You'll have to get him to cooperate, though. Smack him on his nose and tell him to cooperate. <laughs> <laughs> you better cooperate, you hear me? You're a good little boy and you cooperate. It's a good boy. Could have I mean, my... I guess we, you know, explain to him what the deal is that, uh, you know, um, we're going to send you to, uh, with our friends to a safe, safe house, uh, to, uh, rehabilitate for, uh, a week or so. Until we can find, uh, a way to, uh, Secret you back to uh, Central. 
uh, but it's important that um, even though it's been this long, that uh, we're discreet and uh, you keep a low profile. Because uh, yeah, nobody's really going to want to uh, a acknowledge your existence or b deal with the mess that comes with it. So um, better off just uh, keeping a a low profile until. Uh, we can get you safely back to uh, Magi. Sounds like more doing nothing, but I guess I can't complain at this point. But at least you can do nothing with somebody else. I guess that's what it's all about at the end of the day, he says, looking back at Ronica. Oh, you want to do it with her? <laughs> I certainly wouldn't mind it. <laughs> you filthy little animal. <laughs> Even after all this time. All right. Um, you know they make. Uh, well. Well, they make constructs now. So anyway, the, the people back at the safe house, they'll they'll show you. Can I, yeah. You can have your own personal little construct. Name it whatever you want. Freak. You know, I'll follow you, whatever you, advice you give me. You're making the calls, but it seems like it'd be more straightforward to just find the, the royal guard. Am I in enemy territory then? Yeah. More or less. Simple enough for me then. You got it. I'm yeah. Not trying it, to make it, more it, enemies while I'm out here. Yeah, if you were found, uh, there would be a lot of attention. Where did you come from? Who are you? Uh, yeah. You should expect to be placed right back here or in a place similar if you were to be found by the appropriate authority, says Ronica. Right, yeah. So, uh, a little bit of restriction. You still have a lot of, you know, a little bit more restriction. Uh, just for a few more weeks, probably, and then we're done with that nonsense. You must he finally a... get back up to his feet firmly. Well, thank you all, sincerely. But uh, yeah, you can vitalize and you can twiddle your thumbs. You can sit on them. You know, whatever you want to do. Yep. I'm ready to head out as soon as you'll have me. Or wait on your escortes. Copy. Um, it's Slim and Billy. That's, uh, that's who's coming for you. Okie dokie. And Tex and No Doubt. Those guys are, they're coming in too. Uh, um, so there's more chambers. Let's go to the... We want to continue the chambers. Let's go to the next yeah. chamber. Uh, the next cheapest? I don't know what you bought them for anymore. Um, well, we bought the cheapest, or we just opened the cheapest. This was the second cheapest, I think. It was? Cool. We've opened two. Yeah. The first one had the uh, <laughs> item. Want to go to the rich one? Maybe we can get this guy in a disguise while we, while uh, we let's wait. Let's open the one that I bought. The, the... We bought the Transcendental Study. Yeah, the Transcendental Study one. All right, yeah. Let's do oh, wait, that. no, let's open the, the Royal House one, the Silver and whatever one. Uh, Obsidian Silver, the yeah. Wardrobe Chamber? Yeah. Okay. That's Veronica good. opened up one Silver. more. Somewhat eager this time, you noticed. Um, once more, the Ancestor reforms the solid... Uh, stone around the chamber and reforms the stone's shape to provide a doorway for you to enter through. Inside you find a well-ventilated repository of various forms of clothing. The chamber is vast and many times the size of a commoner home or chamber bound within dark magi. There are several proprietary pieces of magitech presumably belonging to the previous owner, uh, waiting, uh, being interacted with or interfaced to prepare whatever clothing you're looking for. Although, uh, it might be more, uh, 
productive to simply give a manual search yourself since you're not quite certain as to what the stores include. Unlike the other two chambers, it is fully lit, has power, and is uh, well conditioned in its air quality. Hey Josh, real quick. Um, yeah. Hate to backtrack, but it, was there anything else of significance that uh, that other one? Do you think, or can we go back the, there later? The no, you can go back later, but in the textile one, no, y'all found everything. Oh, okay. no, I meant the torture chamber. Yeah, there's no. He was the only one in there. All right. Cool, cool. Josh is a liar. No. -uh. <laughs> no one gets me. Alright, so no one gets you, you're, you're you're the average emo. You see as you walk about uh what appear to be hundreds of different outfits and articles of clothing assembled together. It appears there seems to be some sort of automated process put in place to select outfits or make sets of outfits uh, for occasions either seasonal or uh, occasional and so forth, uh, many of which have gone unused through the mini cycle. No, sorry, the, the one cycle that this has been unopened. Mm. You see anything uh, you like in here, Ren? Any Anything? Oh, uh, he's waiting up. Uh, did you want to come it. in? No, we don't. Oh, no, 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 we don't want that guy looking at our whatever we're doing. Okay, then. Never mind. That guy needs to be gone or whatever before we even open these things. Okie dokie. All right. Al Al Alton speaks out of turn with the. Uh, all seem to be pretty mean for a guy who's real willing to risk his life for our. You know, country years ago. I think you at least gotta give the guy a little bit of respect about it. But that's just my opinion on the matter. We're talking about this Ren guy? No, uh, the guy that was in the uh, torture chamber. Yeah, that's, that's Ren. Ren. Yeah. Yep. And, um, yeah, that, that guy's not an elite guard. He was a soldier. Not an elite guard. Not a current elite guard. We don't know who he is. We don't know what he's been through. Uh, we got a mission to conduct. Uh, the humanity is, well, we saved him and we're going to take care of him and be fine. He doesn't need to know what we're doing or what we're up to. No, no disrespect there. Just simply, uh, he doesn't need to be hanging around with us and we don't need to be carrying him around like a uh, like a liability yep and then all, all of our good work will be wasted if he dies uh, yeah I mean yeah if, if he dies or somebody captures him it's like well, what happened no these people released you and then they go looking for us and you know whatever uh, it's just yeah just cool, we saved him, get out of here, go to the safe house, that way he has the least amount of information he could possibly know, but yeah, there's uh, there's no way this guy's going to be part of the team without being, you know, a vetted elite guard, because we just can't trust him. He's we, also we, probably not nearly as yeah. trained as you guys are. Probably not. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, like, yeah, we've been trained for cycles together. We've shared, you know, our entire memories. So there's, there's no, no trust of, issue between any of us. He's out of practice too. Through that. So yeah, like we know everything there is to know about each other, because we've shared all those memories. There's no, there's no hiding anything from each other. So, and then this guy is just. I'm duped. So that that's just why I'm like, now keep keep that separate, and uh, then we'll continue mission once he's not there. Veronica's our magic contact, so I mean, obviously we we have to um, utilize and share information with her. My bad. Let's grab the clothes. All right. Um, we see. 
Okie dokie. Seasonal right, clothes. So a lot, lot, lot of clothing. Yes. A lot of shiny, silvery, obsidian clothing. Yes. Do we sense right, any, um... Jewelry? Shoes? Stays? Any mana Tiari. signatures or any... Anything funny? Any energy signatures? Yeah. Uh, yes. One second. Um, um, you sense an unusual surge of mana emanating from one particular room within this extensive chamber. It's on the second floor. Oh, shit, there's floors. <clears throat> Can I, uh... That's correct. Yep. I cast gather gather res resonance to see if I detect life form in these chambers. Uh, there are no life force detected. Yeah. No demonic energy signatures. Uh, negative. No demons. Cool. As you're yeah. moving about, you catch the interface of some of the magic tech that is floating around by you, uh, waiting for it to be to be interacted with. It is listing a total inventory of 335 uh, pieces of uh, outfit uh, ready for your selection. Sweet. Uh, Portican. Yeah. It's uh, it's two o'clock here for me now. I got you. I will be. Uh, uh, some can someone can catch me up next time on what happened while I was gone. Sure, no problem. Thanks for joining us, Rob. Thank you for having me. Goodbye. It's nice meeting you. Oh, I'm about to get a new banana hammock. No. <laughs> neon, neon purple banana hammock. Go. Oh, that shit. shit's banned. <laughs> is, it, is it crafting a neon purple banana hammock on me? Uh, no. Faulty. What if I just say Speedo? Eh? What if I say Speedo? Go. No. Oh. Those are banned. Everything is banned. <laughs> How do you know as a consumer what's banned? Um, you hit it with the banned hammer, and it's banned. No. But if you didn't hit it, how do you know it's banned? Um, well, if you're not sure, just hit it, and then it's banned. Then you're good. That's a good point. There's wisdom in those words. Okie dokie. Hmm. So what's uh, going on now? The energy signature carries a power of two with it. It is sta It is stationary. It gives all, even though it's not in your sights at the moment, it gives all the uh, features uh, fitting the description of a barrier that is erected. A barrier? Correct. Oh. You see my uh, picture? Okay. In Discord? No. It's a banana oh. hammock. What the? What are you doing that for? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> this is what everybody's banned. The drag, the dragon thing? <laughs> no, the banana hammock. Oh, where? where? <laughs> On the Discord uh, profile picture. My God, y'all are some fucking dumbass jokesters. <laughs> You're just jealous. Here, I'll, I'll put a real joke in the chat. Oh, here it comes, boys. <laughs> oh, no, that's the wrong one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Da, 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 da. That's it. It's a funny. What the fuck? 
Uh, oh, fudge. That's, that's, that's not as funny as it could have been. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um... <laughs> Wait, so... So... He won a slut dragon. Uh, yes. So, how do you guys prefer your steak? Personally, I think legendary is just perfect. Medium rare. Medium. Medium, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, medium. Medium, not medium. Medium. Damn. No one, no one saw my funny. <laughs> it's mediocre up here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but see, if if you eat legendary, that means you also eat poop. What the fuck? We're all a what bunch that? of mids. Oh, no! <laughs> you want to be a even, even if Even if you go... See, epic, that's not, that's actually not epic. That's actually called blue. There's rare and then there's blue. Oh no! I don't know why. It's Wait, how come there's not a how come there's not a veal? Isn't that like more rare? Because it's, no, it's not a whole cow. No, that's just baby oh. cow. Yeah, but that means it's like it's less old, so that it's less aged or something or I don't know. It's just like, like how you cook it. It's a baby. Like, it's it's. I know, but it's kind of. The trope is the rarity thing, so I'm thinking, well, okay, so veal are less common than adults, so... Yeah, this is about a, a, a cooking um, yeah. threshold versus a flavor uh, profile. Yeah. No, that, the, the image I just posted, that's a blue steak. Because blue yeah, is the only Yeah. Dude, that's, how is that, that not just undercooked? I don't get it. it. It's absolutely just fucking seared for like maybe 20, 30 seconds on each side, and then there you go. Yeah, you're just eating and raw that, steak, aren't you? You're 100% right. And right. now you know why I never trust my uncle with steaks. I don't and care what anyone says. I don't care that anyone said he had that he got bad meat. Even Does if it is bad you? meat, you can fucking cook it. Does he like give you shit if you tell him to put it back on? The thing is, everyone at the party, even him and his girlfriend, threw it away. And when I asked why, because I didn't what? even need it, he said, he said, okay, he's like, if we're going to be honest, your grandpa got scammed by someone who said that he was a veteran like your grandpa. So your grandpa took sympathy and wanted to help the guy, so he bought steak. But he's like, the steak's so bad, it doesn't even cook properly. And I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. Okay, I'm like, I'm like, so are you saying that this steak is uncookable? Like you sit it on the grill and it doesn't cook? Is is that how the meat is? Or I don't I don't get what just... uncookable means unless it's rotten, right? Skill issue. I don't I don't know what uncookable means unless it's uh like charcoal already. Then it's not. Cookable. Oh yeah, I guess I guess if it's already cooked, you can't cook it anymore. But <laughs> yeah, well, even rotten in that one, I, you can cook rotten in food. Ugh. Hot pot. You can cook wet food. You can cook pickled fucking whatever. Um, I guess challenge accepted, bro. <laughs> challenge accepted, bro. Hit me up. Yeah, most restaurants when they get when the meat goes bad for a little bit, they just wash it with water and put a shit ton more seasoning on it so you can't taste it. I I, I honestly do not think that's true. Uh, and the only reason I say that I don't think that's true is is because um, saving twenty dollars I don't think is worth risking your entire business. Yeah. No, I don't often see it happen, but there's like uh, one guy where he actually showed that that's how they did stuff. Like I don't I don't doubt that that occurs, but I would say that's a very small uh, component. Of restaurants operating i mean yeah. if it's kind of going you I mean you probably probably still like slow cook it and like put in like a stew or something i guess i mean i've been served rotten chicken um before and i smelled it immediately and i was like whoa mm -mm, nope and they're like what and the waiter was trying to like <clears throat> play it off like nothing was wrong with it and i said smell it and he's like what 
and he smelled it from like a foot away. I'm like, no, no, smell oh, it. Get no. And then he got close and he pulled away real fast. I said, oh, see? Boy. That's oh, it. Boy. I'm out of here. I'm not paying for any of my drinks or anything. Get fucked. I almost took a bite of that. But then I went, no, smell it first. Yeah. That's why it's yeah, not okay. weird to smell things before you before anything. I can't smell things. Mm -hmm. I'm a medium guy, but I pull I pull my steaks off the grill at medium rare temperature so that they rest into medium. Great success. And I I, th I think the I think the one restaurant that never could cook a steak properly, Charlie's. I'm sorry. Never heard of it. I never heard of it. Good. I've been to, there. to many restaurants that can't cook a steak properly. What about apple bees? Oh, around here we call them apple fleas because a lot of people hate the no. restaurant. That one, that one no. absolutely depends on who's cooking. Texas uh, right. Yeah, what if it's an food. Asian restaurant yeah. and it's a and it's a dog steak? Um, what kind of dog? Uh, Chihuahua. I mean, that's a really thin steak, so you need to be very skilled to cook a thin steak. I mean, oh, we're talking, no. you know, maybe five, six seconds on each side. Very high heat. You're going to want some butter down there, not oil. But you're going to want to put the butter down just right before you hit the meat, because otherwise the butter's going to burn. Yeah, yeah. You're going to want to cook yeah. that sashimi style. Really okay. Oh, what else you got? What other kind of brain busters you got? I want to ask um, you about them. Iguana or something? What about a French dog? What about a French dog? Yeah. Well, that's, 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 see, that's a trick question. That's a myth. You can't catch a French dog because it's what? always running away. Oh, no. It's always running away. You can't, you can't catch a French dog. Yeah. Okay, Plus, but, um... if, if you did catch the dog, it'd be so hairy, it'd take you like 10 years to shave it down to where you could use it and then there wouldn't be enough meat to use it i thought french dogs were submissive yeah. <laughs> i think that's fucking bullshit dude uh no, okay okay hold on you, you know what you know what call, this conversation has reminded me of when we were talking earlier what's the most fucked up thing or fucked up game you ever heard of children playing i don't what? know shoots and ladders I don't know okay. why. I, I, I was, I, my uncle's uh, wife destroyed another, or somehow managed to bust the gas line in a vehicle, so we had to tow it back to their apartment place. And while there, my uncle and his best friend talked to one of their old best friends. And I was like, "Who was that guy? I've never met him before." And they're like, "Remember that time?" We told you that uh, we played Slave Masters. I'm like, yeah, like maybe. That's a and game. I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no. I I'm like, I'm like, how fucked up were you? Because he's a man of color, and they're like, oh no, no, we weren't the ones who came up with that idea. He was. They said, here's what he wanted us to do. He wanted us to get one of the old VHS cameras or recorders and go down to Town Square. One of one of them. One of us dressed in proper fancy clothes. The other one dressed like a slave, aka him, and to run around the fountain uh, with him screaming, "No master!" and me screaming, "Get back here!" And I'm like, "I'm like, y'all were some fucked up children, you know that?" They're like, "Well, we didn't come up with it. He did, but we never ended up doing it because his grandma said, it, "Said, oh hell no." Yeah, he was trying to get some views. Yeah. Great. This so, was back before YouTube was even a thing. What you, how old are you? I'm 18 and my uncle's... YouTube's older than you. Yeah. So it, it, it can absolutely happen. Because uh, YouTube existed before he did. And you did. So... Oh, YouTube came out in that was like 2005, which was the year I was born. There you go. And this happened 
when my uncle was a child, so... Oh, you, you yeah, this would've... You couldn't monetize it back then. You had to wait. It was only like till 2010 when it actually became monetizable, I think. That's you kicking out, Alex. Come on. Jesus. All right. All right. So we are in a closet. We got the... Guns. I got a new banana hammock. Um, uh, is there any... Uh, we sent Amanda's signature up on the second floor. Can we explore that? Right. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, a barrier. Apparently, a barrier that's been erected on the barrier. second floor. Barrier. Sort of closed room. Can. Is there a terminal somewhere? Uh, you head up the stairs, uh, moving past more of the Magitech, awaiting your inf uh, interface. And you see the barrier with a palpable blue glow. Inside, you see several uh, items affixed to the wall that seem to have special significance. These are not ordinary fabrics or attire meant for commons within the Magian uh, kingdom, but are in fact arms and weaponry. Oh, shit. You immediately spy the uh, menacingly large cyan greatsword being held against the wall. The barrier, however, is considerably weak. It is only a power two. Yeah, it's odd. It's trash. Memory covered. Power two barrier. I don't think it's a trick. I think it's just somebody that owned this was weak. But let's see. Let's see. Yeah, let's go with the memory. Like Shinnok. Uh, the recovery shows a member of the Obsidian Silver House move about with several vassals with her. Um, she stores this weapon, has someone bring it in the room before they leave, and then as some sort of specialist, also belonging to the Silver House, erects this barrier. She then uh, moves away as soon as it is done, giving no second glance to the items. So this barrier is protecting a weapon storeroom? The, yeah, storing arms, and that's correct. We should uh, probe the monos around and see if there's any traps or stuff like that. Uh, the Magitech around it is connected to Ancestor. What's your trap lore? <laughs> um, I am half great door. Oh, I'm, I'm half trap. I'm half trap. What? <laughs> Just kidding. Holy fuck! I didn't know. Hand, <laughs> it's a trap hole. Oh no! <laughs> it better not be. I come from Trapezoid. Harvest. Um, could, could we just brute, brute force this barrier? Or would that, like... So, a power to you? Uh, sorry? Uh, would brute forcing it, like, cause destruction or damage to the area around... The ancestor? No, to the no. barrier. If you brute force the barrier, will that damage the barrier? Yes. No, the stuff around, like everything, like oh. the clothes and the. Oh, I can't. I can't answer that. It depends on how you do it. All right. Probably. And if other spells are attached to it too. Can I probe the mana structure around it? The barrier. Um, it provides a considerable defense as it is connected to Ancestor. Um, what if, uh, I'm not going to what if, I'm going to spiritualize and walk through the barrier. You spiritualize seamlessly through the barrier. Oh my goodness. You find the Cyan Greatsword. There are apparently characters etched into the blade, indicating it is a Cyan relic of some considerable importance. There are 
to the corner two sets of apparently adept style armor and a series of jewels in a in a in a jewelry box to the side as well jewel. as several scrolls several scrolls correct it's a... um uh, yeah i have a question you well, said it would be important to a scion that's correct like, yeah uh, with my Scion Lore 3, do I know anything about it? This is, from at first glance, one of the Scion hero weaponry belonging to some of the leaders, probably from one of the various instances, few instances of Scion Civil War that ultimately erupted as basically a result in trying to um capture living space because as you recall in Cyan history the bombardment from celestial bodies to the planet's surface pushed many people underground where living space was limited as was food and resources before the advent of mana uh, after yeah. mana these places were still disputed um, as they were believed to be sacred and their skirmishes fought over them so each of these Cyan swords is named after a mountain that is said uh, to be forged from. Yeah, uh, he looks the other. He's like, hey, if we can get that sword, can, uh, can I take a look at it more closely? So, uh, I'm gonna try to, um, use telekinesis to, I guess, acquire them, and then do I need to physically touch them to put them in the old uh, mental storage? Yes, you have to channel into them. Um, you clearly see a um, a note, a plaque next to the wall, indicating that, uh, sorry, the date with which it was acquired and donated. And there are, seems to be, it seems to be, it seems to have been assessed as being cursed. Yeah. Oh, good. Did you say courage? <laughs> First. <coughs> Good old curse. Curse Rooney. Well, anything that says it's cursed, I'm not touching. Hey, uh, Josh, I'm going to use Black Chidori and it will destroy the barrier. Uh, Black Chidori, okay. Barrier is destroyedified. Hey, I have that. How do you do that? Um, why did you use black Jidori? Because it's better. Okay. Better than what? Uh, orange Jidori. Oh, I didn't know it was orange Jidori. I didn't know it was like that, dude. There was an orange Jidori, though? No. Well, what other colors are there? Uh, what? Well, 50 shades of gray. There's what, Jidori? There's white and black Jidori? White, it's white. Hot, okay, there's flat Jidori and black Jidori? Yeah. What's the difference between white Jidori and black Jidori? Uh, the Shidori? white one is superior. <laughs> God damn it, Joshua. You're back in less than a month and you're already useless. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I was trying to hit my vape when that happened. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Do I sense demonic energy? Uh, negative. <laughs> yeah, it's just curse. I'm not interested. What about the scrolls? They say anything in particular? Like what they are? These scrolls do not appear to be magical in nature. Instead, they be, appear to be blueprints or... Uh, uh, what, do, what do you call it? Um, diagrams for a fighting style. Ooh. Oh, nice. That's very yeah, nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and grab those and put them on the old uh, mental storage. Oh, I guess you broke the barrier, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take the scrolls. Okay, as you Good lift style. up the scrolls, the barrier is erected once more. 
Oh. Whatever. <laughs> she no standing on the on the barrier edge. Got split in half. He yeah. tanked it. Yeah. He tanked it. Now there's two Shin Nas. <laughs> oh, no. Full power Shin. Two full power Shin Nas. Yeah, but they're both banned, so it doesn't matter. If if they were to refuse again, they'd be a whole demon Shin Nas. Yeah. Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, Alright, so. Uh, Neutron, I, grab those scrolls. Uh, the Cyan weapon was cursed. What about the other ones? There are two menacing looking adept armor pieces here that look to be quite old. Given all of your adept lore, you can't actually pinpoint what clan or planet they originate from. It's what? truly elusive. Why uh, the adept lore is six, Joshua? Sorry? Why adept lore is max plus two? What is your uh, race? Um, I am lost and shadow clan. You recognize this as the psycho set. Psycho set. On and base psycho set. It is a hallmark of the lost clans. Can you uh, elaborate on the? Uh, well, the lost clan are the group of adepts that were the undisputed most powerful. Um, they were so powerful that they exiled themselves because they could find no worthy opponents. <laughs> but this is why the strongest clans, the zealous clans currently, do not use any s rank styles. Because although the Lost Clan was still ultimately pacifistic in that it didn't kill anybody, the rule for the Lost Clan battles were that they would only fight talented individuals, but if you lost, they forced you to join their clan. So all the S rank master styles of adept were ultimately combined into the lost clan. Hmm. And we know. Why didn't they flip it on him and be like, hey, if you lose, you have to join our clan and, I, and teach us everything you know? And then they'd be like, even. But I guess the other clans didn't think about that. Uh, because then the lost clan would just challenge that guy again and take him back. Well, then he'd say, "No thanks, already got it." <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Actually, I have a question. Can I phase yeah. into the room as well? Yes, if you have a phasing technique. Well, Shinnaw broke the barrier with um, black. Um, Shudor, Jumanji. Uh, Chidori. <laughs> Chidori. Chidori. Yep. Okay. Black Chidori. Yeah. So Let's examine this armor some more. And the barrier comes back and you start moving stuff. Oh, well, the barrier has increased to an endurance of five. Jeez. Oh, this, oh, right. The second barrier went up. That's yeah. right. Okay, so the second barrier is up and it's an endurance of five. Correct. Okay, well, that's something. So I guess you can't walk in there. Sorry. Where would my face take uh, be at? What, what race? You're a Saya? So, yeah. Uh, techniques and, you no, you're and you have no covenants? No covenants. I can't think of a phasing technique you would have. Yeah, I don't think I I have one either. Yeah, phasing techniques are pretty rare. Uh, ghosting can do it. Uh, that's a magic though. Demonic yeah. phase is an energy technique. Shadow phase is a, a covenant technique. Uh, they're not common at all. Oh, hey, I can shadow phase now. Well, then yeah, you can get in there. Well, then you can. Wait. Wait, how can you shadow phase? Oh wait, no, I can't shadow phase. No, never mind. What the fuck? I can't. I can't. I can't. Okay. I was. Oh yeah. Like, you have to be a covenant member. You have to be a covenant member. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you all found the locket. Did you not find the locket? Yeah, we did. What's the locket do then? 
That's a ring, actually, I think. What does it do? It allows you to shadow phase once. Must be tar recharged. Very good. <clears throat> Are there any uh, markings on these two pieces of armor? A lost clan insignia. Okay, then, uh, yeah. I smell them. I can channel onto it. Oh, there are two yeah. sets of it. Yeah. Sounds like she knocks. Okay, I'll take one. It's all you. It smells. It smells like. It smells like you. It smells like it was made for you. <laughs> Doki. Doki. Someone want, else gets another one. I want one. Every time I'm on the other side. Eye, every time you lay your eyes on the lost clan signia, it becomes readily apparent that. One of the unnamed ones, Signia, is very close in in similarity. Oh. I think Celestial Lore check. Probably Akuma is the leader. That's correct. Yeah, Celestial Lore 3. In the shape of a giant swamp. Oh, no! Oh. All right. Well, another black Chidori blast. On uh, what is the effect of Chidori? I I was gonna ask Chanel because I I wrote I wrote a really bad description of it. What does black Chidori do? It says good, it, you know. good synergy with melee technique. That's what I put. Base 35, small AOE. You both have black uh, Chidori? Yeah, I, I but I, I didn't get a good description of it. Where'd you, where'd you guys get that from? From the Shadow Adept Training. Part of the Shadow Adept Training. You have to pick it. It's one of the energy techniques, along with Umber Lock, Hidden Flock, Advanced Adept Glide. Black Chidori pierces guard. Uh, base thirty five, small AOE, cost fifty five. What the hell did I pick? Cost fifty five. Cost fifty five. Yeah. That's the core training. Um, it's part of the Shadow Adept training. Energy yeah. technique training. Which is the reticent shadow, right? Negative. Reticent shadow is another oh, okay. training. Shadow, shadow is training. training. Training you're talking about. Yeah. I think we would. We, 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 Shadow Death Aura technique, which is just you get purple light. We learned um, this from somebody, right? Like somebody so told us. These techniques still have to be purchased, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I don't have yeah. any of that or any, or any information that says I would get to choose any kind of. Uh, so the Shadow Adept training should have given you technique points to spend, or no? Uh, yeah, 20, 20 skill points. Okay, so yeah, you would have gotten skill points to spend. So there was regular melee techniques available, and then there was some master techs that were unlocked because you did well during the uh, tower. Um, some of these are Preunumbral Fold, Sodden Shadow, Falling Feathers, Prenumbra. Is that in the technique document? Uh, negative. Where can I find those? Those are part of the treasure in the Shadow of Depth side of things. Um, and then there's the energy techniques. So it's basically just, are you, do you want to pick the energy tech, which are Umbra Lock, Hidden Flock, Advanced Guide, or Black Chidori, or one of the melee techs, which are the ones I listed before. So if you don't yeah. have... Chidori, you didn't buy it. Well, I'm like wondering, well, why? I, why didn't I buy anything? I remember you sent mentioning Umbra, Umbra Lock. Familiar. Umbra so Lock. You don't, you don't have Umbra Lock or Penumbra or Falling Feathers. Where, 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 where would that those be? Are, Energy those techniques. Are melee techniques. Yeah, melee techniques. Melee techniques. Oh, uh, pen, well, it's Numbra, right? Penumbra? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And Numbra Fold, would that uh -huh. be one of them? 
Yeah, those are both master techs, that's right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Last for submission check, plus one to submission diffuse and sequence of, plus, of seven plus. Okay. So, so there's ladder, there's 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 as well. Um, uh, Faded Riser, Twilight Storm, Stirring Reaver. Yeah, and I had a bunch of uh, leftover skill points, so I, I used a lot of these ones. I purchased them. Combo may continue yeah. with additional techniques until target makes a discipline versus discipline plus X. I'm, I'm sure that's a T6. X is uh, plus one to their roll after every after every technique after the max chain. Hey Joshua, can you post the uh, armor stats and all that? Okie dokie. Uh, Why did I choose this? Because it emulates the last technique. And if I use it right here, I get to use this twice. Was I able to pick more than one? Because for some reason. And then I can make a submission. One, what? one of these uh, techniques. Yeah, all of these were available for purchase if you had technique points, as far as I was aware. Okay, because I have Numerafold and Black Chidori and Falling Feathers. Okie dokie. Just want to make sure I can do So yeah, we'll go ahead and let you purchase those on a dedicated those training dedicated next training. time. Uh, I can't find this shit. Uh, all right, so psycho set lost psycho set. Um, blah, blah, blah. I need that. Oh yeah, falling feathers is good. I got it. Uh -huh. Okay. Hey, Shin, now what do you have for the description of Black Shidori? Um, it's in the document section. The document. Uh, Shadow oh. Adept Tech. Or the handouts. That's what I meant. <clears throat> Shadow Adept Tech. Okay. Oh, yeah, that has all the stuff, too, guys. Yeah, that's where we put it all. Oh. Shadow Adept Tech. Yeah, so destroys uh, barriers and fields unblockable. Yeah. yeah. So the cost has been increased by five. Go ahead and uh, I'm going to put this in the group loot. Okay, so the things that have been changed about Black Chidori, let's check. The scaling. I didn't have scaling whenever I got it. And then... Like a scaling triangle? Mm-hmm. Plus 10% life force? Ooh. Okay, so looks like it's pretty much the scale. The negative scaling is ten higher, and I think it. Um, yeah. Yeah. The cost is fifty-five. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Two variation slots? What the hell does that mean? Two variation slots? Uh, variation slots allow you to combine the abilities from other styles you know. 
into the S rank style. All oh, right, this is going to come to your variation style, which I can actually use. Oh my god! Uh, even though I have a weapon arts of seventy. So do I have Black Chidori? After reading it, I'm guessing that there's no way I didn't get that right. Because... Yeah. And that I one didn't it... put a requirement on it yet, because it's playtesting, so I'm not really sure about it, but whatever. That's pretty good. Um, 35 damage for 55 cost. It's not one to one, but it's it's pretty good. It's unblockable. Small AOE. It's a yeah, it's a shield killer. Although I guess I didn't get it. I don't know why. I mean, it may have been changed since you last saw it. For some so reason or another, I remember you getting Umbra Lock, but I don't remember. I don't know if you actually oh, got it, got it. Have. Grab intangible entities in the trap. Uh, Does that sound like you? Oh. No. Someone's used it before, I know that. I've used, used it. Not used it. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure Chin not have used it. Okay. Uh, I think I decided not to get it. Uh, I remember Penumbra. Is that, is that kind of puts you into solo combat when something's intangible or fucking whatever? You're kind of solo. I'm not very good at a one on one or. And what do you use to spiritualize? What technique again? Spiritualize. Spiritualization. Okay. Use uh, to spiritualize. It's passive. It's a um, it's a core training uh, that you can only get in character creation, All right. or for some other kind of special training, I guess. But I chose it instead of getting another like actual racial training, like Saya training, which would have been amazing. Uh, but I was like, no, nah, you know what? I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with spiritualization. Just kind of like if I was uh, Saya, I could have gone for like. High Hypermind, which is also amazing, but it's freaking banned. Yeah. You don't know about Hive Mind. Hive Mind's super banned. That's the fucking hell broken. You're broken. <laughs> what about Groupthink? Uh, Groupthink is uh, overpowered. It's it's a sorcery. Uh, it's a branch of sorcery called Groupthink. I'll say. You just, uh, you walk in, you say some bullshit, you're like, uh, they, uh, they're coming here for your yabs, and, uh, we have mountains and mountains of, and then you put in a, a lot of colorful adjectives, mountains and mountains of very big, precise, accurate evidence, uh, we have all of it. Everybody's seen it. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you get the thing. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we solved the, the wonder of all of those, uh, little items. Uh, uh, so you looked at the, uh, armor, you see the Saiyan sword, you picked up the scrolls, there's also a jewelry box. Where were the scrolls? Uh, the scrolls it. were diagrams of a fighting style. What uh, type of fighting? Oh, I don't know. And okay, fuck a, um, diagram to some sort of alchemical spell. Well, here you go, Saudi. Try to figure that thing out. Uh, <laughs> no, and I are going to try to figure out this fighting style. Style. That uh, fighting style band. We're still going to try to figure out what it is. It looks to be incomplete, but it is written in sign characters with Magian notes sprawled in. 
We're going to need a cyan translator. If only we had a cyan elite guard member. If only. That was from Saya. It spoke Saya. Knew about Saya <laughs> things. They're banned, so there's none of them. Oh man, if only we had a Saya in the party. Yeah. Everything rests on this one thing. If, if, so if we had a Saya in the party right now, we'd win? No. Oh, <laughs> man. We'd win the Ooh. whole game. No, you'd be banned. It's the opposite. <laughs> you got it wrong. Do I have a level game. three style war. Shino and work? Alton are gonna work on that when Alton remembers how to speak Saya. <laughs> I think he's AFK. I think he's. I think he's. Um, yeah. D W D. I'm gonna call that Dion with, with, with the Doge. A Doge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Doge. The dudes. To do its stuff in the house. Bad dog. Or it ate something. But, uh, um, yeah, anyway. Um, so there's an elemental. I'm sorry, I missed that. An elemental what? There's an elemental something or another in the room. Negative. Oh. There's an alchemical oh. scroll with oh, a diagram. Ow. Sorry. Your element. <laughs> yeah, the diagram is something. Well, the diagram looks to be pretty technical. It'll take some many, many hours to look over. With an, uh, all right. Gives us time. With an intelligence of 10 and... Uh, let's do this. What did I miss? Oh, yeah, so basically um, a minute ago we were just dealing with somebody who actually uh, was going to connect us with Gendo, but he said uh, Gendo only deals with Saya, and uh, we're like, well, we have a Saya in the party, but you weren't here, so the guy fucked off. He's like, well, if you don't have him now, then I can't deal with it. I can't oh, so basically, we okay. could have won that game right there, there, but you were gone, so now we, we have to play the game ah. alone. Thanks. I... <laughs> I am sorry. My son decided to piss on the carpet. Don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. my, 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 my young pup of a dog decided, you know, I just got back from being two hours ago, and I used the restroom, but I decided to piss on the carpet, because why not? Yeah. I'm just messing with you, man. That, did, that didn't happen. But... <laughs> But you and Shinan are going to be studying uh, a scroll of some kind of ancient fighting style and trying to figure out uh, what it does. What if we need to roll to study it? And well, you're uh, Saya, and it's written in Saiyan Lore. Uh, Lore is a three. You recognize the characters match that of the weapon on the wall. Um, the diagrams are incomplete. I guess if I could, I would try to pick up the sword. The plaque next to the sword labels the sword as uh, cursed. It, label, it puts the information about when it was acquired, uh, to who it was gifted, and that it is in fact cursed. We don't know what kind of curse it is. We do uh, know that if it's cursed, it's bad. <laughs> Real bad. The only way to find out what kind of curse it is is to channel into it or touch it. I, if it's a particularly I, profound curse, you wouldn't have to do either of these, and you would be afflicted just by being near it or looking at it. You I'll, know what? Um, I'll do it. I'll I'll pick it up and channel it. into it, and no, I'll no, just no, repeat it. As you pick it up and channel into it, you recognize the weapon is not cursed at all. Uh huh. huh. It's trick. You probably could have just walked over to it and went, "There's no demonic." Yeah. Uh, Alton will ask if he can hold it. Then. Do I um? 
Do I detect any presences in the sword? There is a presence in the weapon. Uh, can I use Tribunal of Valor to communicate with it? It will take a vitalization if you wish to do that now. I uh, will, yeah. Well, he does okay, that. Go. Can I uh, research the alchemical diagram? It is increasingly complex the more you look into it. Um, it will take considerable concentration and even perhaps even the inside of some colleagues if possible. Oh. Okay. Um, well, I guess since he's doing that, um, Alton, it'd be a good opportunity to study that scroll. <laughs> oh, the scroll oh, is still okay. complete as it ever was. The diagrams are insufficient to provide information about the style. Oh. Well, I will put the alchemical well. diag <laughs> diagram in my mental storage. Okie dokie. Uh. Alton will ask, isn't there a technique to find missing parts of certain things? Or can we not apply that in this situation? Uh, it depends what spell you're talking about, brother. Uh, what spell would it be? What spell would it be? There is like a refurbish, there are uh, prayer type spells that will <laughs> reconstruct shit. There's, I think, tra transcendentalism maybe that does some shit. Um, transcendentalism can bring out the latent abilities of materials or the environment around you. Hmm. We're talking about trying to, to rebuild the, the scroll, like to complete it. Um, under what are you what are you drawing from in order to do well, this? That's what I was asking Alton if that's what he was getting at. Is trying to like rebuild the scroll of the fighting style? Is that what you're trying to get at? Yes, that works. Mm -hmm. I need to clarify, the scroll isn't, like, tampered with. It's literally not finished. Okay. Oh. Oh, so it's an unfinished style. Okay. And in the middle of the thing, and then you're like, well, what's he do after that? I don't know. It's not finished. Tune in next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. <laughs> What's the Magian note say about it that will accompany it? It says try hard to scrub. It was me. Alright. So I only said so the scroll suffice. So I was never finished, but I could try to practice and finish it. Oh, we're definitely going to take it with us, because, I mean, yeah, we could, we could, we could finish it. Is, can we tell if it's a weapon style or a combat style at all? It is the two-handed style for weapons. Uh, well, I'm not really interested, but I bet uh, Alton is. Alton says while he vitalizes with that weapon, uh, Alton would like to try to Imp add and finish off that style with trying to practice some of the motions and trading it to an end. The motions depicted are very difficult to comprehend. What is your weapon arts? I weapon arts? Oh, that. Well, that. That, that, that. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> recommend maybe you practice with Shin Nox. He's very gifted with the blade. My and weapon arts is a 60. We were able to keep up with the depictions of the interactions indicated. You quickly fall short in the comprehension to utilize this style to its fullest. It is profound and incomplete. You doubt your capability of completing the style in an in a improvisational way. Huh. <laughs> Maybe we find more clues. Okay. Uh, there's still the jewelry box, and yep. uh, that's about it. Let's check it. Inside are several, are several uh, what do you call it, uh, dulled gems uh, with a set of two 
crests of belonging to House Obsidian Silver. Mm -hmm. Can I probe them with decipher function? Uh, they have. They are not Magitech. However, they do carry a peculiar uh, mana signature when channeled. Well, that's weird. Hmm. How peculiar. As I, beard, as I scratch my beard. I don't know if I want a regular channel into that. Anybody? I don't channel into it if you need me to. Okay. <laughs> Do uh, the crest is meant to be appended to armor to bear the house obsidian silver. Alton will put it on his armor. Okie dokie. It has an unknown effect. Um, he'll look towards his buddies and say, maybe it's defensive, and um, it'll react if you attack him a certain way. Uh, decipher function won't uh, extract that? Or... Normally it would, it just, so it doesn't seem to be that complex of an effect. Um, let's see. What other flying would do something? Monitor? Because, yeah, it might be sending a signal or something. Monitor? Can I yeah, monitor it? It's not Magitech. It, the, the effect is closer to being blessed. It not, has nothing to do with Magitech, basically. I see. Okay, cool. Um, as the vitalization comes to fruition, you come into contact with the Cyan... Uh, consciousness within the hero's greatsword. I need a hero! <laughs> oh, I need a hero. I greet him. Hello, Master. I am, uh... Shit, what was my name? I forgot. I would make up a name, tell him. SpongeBob. Nighthole. <laughs> Shinra. Nighthole. Nighthole. <laughs> His name's Raw Dog. Raw Dog. <laughs> Hell yeah. You're jealous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um. A student has found me. Have you a worthy adversary for the Infernal? Oh. Does that trigger memory and uh, like a what or the combat art to me? Speaks the word infernal indicates a legendary cyan fighting style known only as the infernal style. The creator uh, was said to have banished himself inside a mountain. Okay, now I am interested in learning this style. I. I seek to be a student. Share with me the memory of this adversary, ready for the infernal. The memory me, of me? Uh, he wants to know what opponent you plan on learning infernal to defeat. Show him the memory. Um, I sh I'll show him a memory of... his name stringer nice good call hmm you don't have a lot of memories of stringer just video i guess surveillance other memories that will not be first hand enough uh well the uh, the the next best choice has to be the death. Um, Jinshade. Uh, or Jinshade? Because you have very vivid memories of him, especially in training. Yep, he, he trained you in you know, stuff. Um, okay, yeah, I'll use Jinshade. Or Ark. I'm sure you trained a lot with Ark. Those two mm -hmm. would be Ark and Jinshade. Yeah. Those two probably on uh, the level. I'm 
Okay. And then the other one who might be in that category is Alton. Uh, no. <laughs> but, um, the memory reciprocates with extreme vibrancy. This one attests to great power. Wow. Are you prepared, mortal, to face the infernal? I am. You had me at power. Speakable power. <laughs> wheel, wheel. Uh, okie dokie, what is your body energy catalyst? My body energy is a whole 90. Okay, you can it's use internal style very well. using this great sword. However, you will not be able to learn it on your own. Oh, so I probably need like a body energy of like 100 or something? Precise for you. Good lord. For how long? Uh, so if you have a hundred body energy, you learn it permanently. And if you lose the body energy, you lose the technique? Oh, bonuses will not count. I have a body energy. Oh, so you know, like a raw fucking hundred? Yeah, only training is going to count towards this. Okay. Yeah, I was like, because if he's at a 90, I could give him the old beefcake. Yeah, you can't no. use uh, spells or full power to reach the hundred. Can okay. I? Uh, I'll make a Faust. You're making a new one. You can't. Oh no! Can't. Um, shit. That's right, one Faust, but I'm still able to make a deal. You can make a tribute. Yeah. What do you want to sacrifice? And for what? Um, I'll tri make a tribute. I'll sacrifice. What? Your soul. There is a price, Gambian. <laughs> the visage I didn't sell? <laughs> nah. I will. Actually, can I make a... Um, this will be a high deal tribute, actually. Or... Uh-oh. So it's going to be kind of hard to make tributes in these circumstances, because there's nothing at stake. Tributes are meant to be used, like, in battle. Otherwise, what? It's just a normal deal? Yeah. yeah. Uh, out of battle tributes are fausts. Those are contracts, basically. And he's only allowed a certain amount of those? So he can make a new faust, but it's going to overwrite the one he already made, and he doesn't want to do that. Oh, because it's not complete or it's ongoing? The faust he has right now is really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking it's ongoing? <laughs> yeah, it's permanent. It's basically like a trait, yeah. Okay. But I, I thought I oh, or, but never mind. Pretty fucking cool weapon, I guess. So okay, and okay, that was okay. to be able to use the weapon or to be able to um finish. No, you can the use the weapon tool. just fine, and while you're using the weapon you have access to the infernal style provided you can communicate with the consciousness inside. However, yeah. you, you don't learn the style permanently unless you have a hundred body energy. Wow. Base. Yeah. Well, I guess not base, but without spells or... Um, without buffs. Without. Yeah, only training and levels. So I assume... Can I... Is it, would it be safe to say that now that I know this, this consciousness teaches infernal style, and that uh, scrolls, can I deduce that they are trying to write down the infernal style? Precisely. Uh, I'll relay all this information I discovered. My comments. 
Okie dokie. Good. Cool. Okay. Excellent. How Excellent. do we Fine. how do we finish it though? How do we how do we do you it? Maybe uh, super competent body energy channeler. What's my body? What's my body talk? Yeah. My my body talks at a sixty. Yeah, we're so, at sixty one. For me, you, you guys actually came. You already mentioned the answer already. It's the transcendental magic. I thought you couldn't use spells, though. Uh, no, not to buff your body energy. To extract the style, because what does this? What does the spell do? It extracts and awakens the nature of objects. Oh, oh. Gosh, I don't have um extract or awakening nature. Hmm. Did I get that spell? Uh, if you've got the skill points. Why don't you look and see if you have something like that first? Okay. Uh, I'll look around if I have a spell like that. Extract uh, nature, awaken nature. And here comes the mighty uh, fist. Hey Josh, can you put that sword in the group uh, loot? Yeah, it's in the group loot right now. Uh, I do have a spell that is uh, direct nature, extract nature. Would that one work? It should say what type of items it's useful on. Uh, gain access to abilities, craft it into objects, bypassing normal requirements. Spell points they must scale with level power being direct. Uh, penalties towards objects and or user are still applied. Equipment. Uh, so equipment, scavs, tomes, arcane spheres, and etc. Okie dokie. So yeah, that'll work then. So right. I could, so I could use that on the sword or on the scroll? I guess technically it's supposed to be awaken nature because that works on consciousnesses. Yeah, because it's coming from the consciousness; it's not coming from the weapon itself. Uh, oh, okay. So awaken nature is the spell I need, then, correct? Yeah. Uh, and how many spell points would that cost? Um, it costs six if you want the novice version. And how much would it cost for the uh, mastered version? Uh, 18. Okay. I'm hungry! Is there, any, is there anything higher than the mastered version? Negative. Okay, then I will spend my. Then I'll spend 18 points to get the mastered version. Okay, you got Awake in Nature. Go ahead and add that as another entry in your spell sheet. Uh, I'm gonna put that in the spell package handout at the bottom. Okay. Uh, 53. Oh, I'm not sure. That's the spell package. Thirty-five. So. Okay. If you took the consciousness out of the sword, it'd ruin the sword, right? Uh, no. Well, I mean, the sword can't teach you infernal anymore. Right. But it would be a sword, yeah. But the consciousness could still teach you infernal. Yeah. I mean, just leave the consciousness. The sword is meant to have the consciousness. Powerful relic, so why would you waste it? Well, I was just thinking, like, if you already knew Infernal, uh, and you didn't want anybody else to learn it, you could remove it. True. True. Unless right. it's yeah. like extra, if you knew Infernal and you were holding the sword, it can teach you Infernal. It's like, well, I can teach you even more. Okie dokie. 
Uh, so you can use Awaken Nature on the sword and begin trying to map the instruction onto the scroll if you like. Hey Josh, is the metal is a golem um, a familiar, or is it a uh, one of those elemental? Um, it could be either or. Oh, okay. So, uh, is it a golem familiar, or is it a golem elemental? I don't know. What the say? the met it says metal golem slash earth. The one I got. Yeah, that's a that's a familiar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. And this guy, this guy's got two deliverance spells called Sentence that are the exact same. Okay. So nobody has Awakened Nature. I do now. Oh. oh. So, now that I have that, I just need to copy it onto my character sheet. So that should be in column. How many spells do I have on my third? I guess I have enough to put another one in there. Uh, cool. Uh, Make it in nature. Okay. I hand the sword off to Alton. I tell him it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a relic consciousness inside that teaches you infernal style if you're confident enough it is not cursed okay uh, hey but do I learn blade siphon <laughs> uh, no, that's only available with the uh, sword. Oh. Sweet. So there you go. There's your fucking sweet badass science sword that does stuff. Hell yeah. And you get a style with it. I'm, too, I'm sure it's a two handed style, I think. Yeah, it's. Uh... And we almost we almost spent money on a weapon. That was an unfortunate thought. Okay, and now control V. Uh, let's see. So I guess. How do I calculate the uh, cat? How do I calculate the cost of the spell? Uh, okay. Um, so, what are you looking at right now? I downloaded all the stuff, so like the zero plus minor, major plus two, extreme plus four. Okay, so the potency um, is going to denote the cost below. So you see minor, major, and extreme are having numbers next to them. So the spell would cost me 90 because I have it at its highest form. Uh, that If you pick the extreme version, you're going to pay 90, but that's only if you're getting the novice version. That's what those slashes are for. The slashes indicate the mastery of the spell. The only purpose of mastery is to lower cost of magic. So the lower the cost, the higher the mastery. Okay, so it actually cost me 30 because I have mastery of it. Uh, it's only going to cost you 30 if you're picking the minor potency. Potency and mastery are two different things. They have nothing to do with one another. Potency is how powerful the spell is. In this case, the... Uh, blah, blah, blah. 
seals have resistance check based on the medium, the potency. The... So yeah, this can work on seals as well. But if you're not targeting a seal, it really doesn't matter. Okay. So I think I got it written down. Yeah, so you kind of want to ask yourself, how powerful of a thing do I want to be able to uh, control or whatever? Or, or manipulate. Manipulate is maybe a better word. And then if, if it's something that's like, oh, I want to get the most powerful stuff, then, you know, it's extreme potency. And then look at that. Oh, how much do I want to pay? Do I want to play 90 or 70 or 80? Yeah, that's really all it is. Potency, okay. power, mastery equals cost. You want your cost to be low and your power to be high. Well, okay. I make how I always look at its functionality. So if I want it to be mediocre, I'll make it that way. But if I want it to be powerful, but I'm never going to use it, like, like if I want it to be the extreme version so it, it can affect a lot of powerful things, but for instance, I know I'm never going to use it or rarely use it in combat. I'm going to get the novice version because it's going to save me spell points. And the mana's not going to matter because I'm going to use it at combat. So you don't really count that. If that is your case. <laughs> like, uh, Sadi has, uh, like, familiar creating spells that cost like 600 mana. Like, he doesn't cast those in combat. So he can have novice versions of that stuff. But yeah, for you, will you be using this in combat? Uh, no, I'll be using it like... Well, what, what are some examples of how you would use Awakened Nature in combat? Um, so I if there's a piece of magitech that you don't have the stats for, you could use this on it to make it activate. Like it says there, it has, it works on transitively sealed things. So if you have something that's transitively sealed but you don't want to break the seal, uh, you can use this to extract a portion of what's sealed inside. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of out-of-combat stuff. Yeah, that's what I thought about, so that's why I went for the um, No, 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 definitely not. The Magitek weaponry that yeah. we're talking about here has, has Magitek weapon requirements, and if you don't meet them, you can't use the Magitek weapon. However, if you carry it anyway and you use this spell, it functions regardless. And if you're sealing a whole bunch of antimatter in a transitive seal, but you don't want to break the seal and unleash all of it at once, you use Awaken Nature and you're releasing antimatter clumps at a portion at a time. Oh, all okay. of that has no applications. Okay. If it's, a, if it's a possessed consciousness, like something satanic, you can unleash that on somebody in a battle. How many spiel points you got? Actual spell points? Yeah, how many spell points? I have, I have 35 and I have 60 extra ones. So extra don't count. Yeah, so you have 35 remaining. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if you got the master version, that'd be half, you know, 52% of uh, your spell points. If you got the mastered version, um. Well, I already paid for it because I had 53 originally, and I already got rid of the 18 points, so I only have 35 left. Well, you get that plus four in extreme, so if you're using this, yeah, on a weapon or something that requires something. Yeah? All right, yeah. So, yeah, you went with the mastered, so it, it'll cost you 70. Did you go extreme, major, or minor? I went for extreme. Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna cost seventy mana uh, okay. to cast. Is there a turn to turn on that? No, it's a single instance type of thing. Decent. 
And then uh, I would scroll down here to where you see um, uh, 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 oh yeah, just underneath Unleashed Potential. You see Spell Shift and Counter Spell? Uh, yeah. Uh, you should, uh, just... Well, these don't actually pertain... Well, actually it does. Yeah, I would, I would copy and paste the Spell Shift Counter Spell things uh, to your, uh just at the bottom of your spell as information. Okay. This one's summon nature, but I mean, um, if you happen to have, if you're using something to summon nature or whatever, then you, you would know that. But the spell shift is important. So, so I can this on the sword. sword. Yeah, you're targeting the consciousness in the sword, not just the sword. If you do take out the consciousness and use it on the sword again, the sword's not going to do anything. So the consciousness is inside the sword. The sword is basically inhabited by an old person's soul. Um, this is the master or one of the masters of the infernal style. You're trying to use this spell on that consciousness to get it to share information about the infernal style that it knows. Ah, okay. No serious damage. It's a really uh, versatile, useful spell. What would be a good name for that? Don't know. Action maker. Two maker. Give me one sec. Action activator. Anyway, we can worry about the details after. Uh, do we want to keep going here? Or do we want to postpone? Uh, I'm good. Continuing. Anybody else? What do you guys want to do? Alright, yeah. I guess I'm good for it. Okay. Uh, Howdy. So, yeah. What was the question? I'm sorry, it was. Uh... You want to keep going? Yeah, we can go for a little bit more. So Kronos. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can use I can use the spell to on the weapon and on the spirit well, on the spirit to learn the technique. Yeah. On the soul. Yeah. Then I guess that's what all can show the healing. Okay. Okay, you weave your transcendental magic on the sword for you to reach into the consciousness where it then shares you information. Did you just ruin the sword? Yet again, no. it requires a communication and demands a target for the infernal. Oh, that's right, because he can't. Oh, wait, um... You can you can use a, a spell in the spell package, I think. What is it called? Maybe. Nanny. Decipher consciousness. Maybe. It's not a piece of magic tech, actually. So. Well, within a seal or construct. And maybe attempt communication, but you're saying it's not a, considered a sealer construct, okay? Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a science sword. It's not Magitech. Um, again, you just you, I don't know if you were following before. Um, you need to give this consciousness a memory of a competent opponent that you're trying to defeat. Because he's, right. not, he's not down with teaching anybody the Infernal style. You have to have a worthy opponent for him. Well, I got a good idea for you. If you, if you can't come up with a good opponent. Oh, let me hear it. Show him some... Uh, quiet. Sorry. 
And it's an easy one too, because you got you basically got two definite choices. You don't get uh, Gen Shade because you weren't there, but you do have Arc because he's your commander, so you definitely drain with it. But you also have the person that's already been deemed worthy, which is Shinnok. <laughs> so you got those two for sure that are probably going to be good enough. But I probably would not recommend arc just because that, that that's like a link to the elite guard so i guess i'll go for shinnok plus don't you want to beat his ass no <laughs> no he's my friend we well, yeah. together yeah he's the best so like don't you want to beat him Gotta beat the All best right, fine. To beat the rest. I guess, I, I guess I'll present him as my enemy. I mean, one day I'd like to say that I beat Shinnaw at something. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen, but um, I might like beat him at like some wrestling. So yeah, I guess I could beat Shinnaw if I snuck up on him. I, I guess I'll fight him. I guess I'll fight him. You're not fighting him. You're just giving a target for the infernal. Oh. So. Yeah, you're just yeah. showing yeah. like a memory of Shinnaw. Yeah, a memory of Shinnaw fighting, which would be plentiful. Anyway, um, as long as the target you've picked has an S rank style, then the guy's going to be satisfied. Oh. Um, Okie dokie. Alright, so he is willing to share details about the Infernal style. Uh, what is your uh, weapon arts? 60. Uh, my 65. Okay, it's you can serious. attempt to uh, transcribe the style to the okay. scroll at your discretion. No, mine's actually a 60, I'm sorry. Okay, same thing. Does he have to roll or anything? No, it's just going to take time. If you're not as efficient, it's going to take you longer. Uh, does his uh, plus whatever bonus, is that only for rolls or does that count towards time? It's plus to what? Uh, for uh, minor, major, and extreme. That's only when targeting seals. Okay. Uh, okie dokie. Alright, um, you guys are down with waiting several hours. We still have, uh... Um, <clears throat> is there any way I could, uh, progress in those progress several hours what? with the, uh, with the alchemy thing, or am I just gonna need the backup? You actually can't perform that work. You need to be in an actual lab. It's mm -hmm. just far too technical. Okay. Cool. You didn't bring your field. You didn't bring your field lab with you. What a loser! I know. I got scientists for you. Kind of. Yep. Beat me to it. Why, why don't you just create a lab, alchemist? <laughs> I can make a familiar lab, okay? You can make familiars, but you can't make a, a scientific alchemical lab, loser. Sounds like somebody's a phony. Hmm. Okay. So uh, he's not, he can't make progress on that, and we're going to wait a couple hours to extract uh, the fighting style, right? Uh, yeah, if you want to. And we're at, we're in the royal um, container, or the, sorry, the container of the House of Silver and Obsidian, or the other That's way. Correct. Obsidian and Silver, Silver and Obsidian. Yeah, Magi's theme here is to make is to combine two colors into one that aren't really combinable. Blah blah blah. Anyway, um, uh, yeah. So yeah, you map down after several hours. The majority of the day passes. Ronica takes the time and opportunity to look about the wardrobe and pick out several outfits she enjoys as the hours go by and go by. Yeah, I'm, I was looking at duds, too. I mean, I don't think I know anything about the shit. I don't want anything, but it's only a year old, so maybe I can get an idea of 
the fashions over time? Like, what's the newest stuff? Because I know what exists now, and then I can kind of see... That's correct. You notice many of the attire seem vaguely familiar as several of the obsidian silver within headlines and articles will have been donning uh, basically garbs of similar make. They're all, of course, belonging to a highly coveted uh, designers and so forth. Oddly enough, it's probably not far-fetched to say that the contents of these fabrics alone in total could net you far more than 11,000 credits. Nice. Yeah, but... There are a total of over 300 outfits if contained within the wardrobe chamber. Probably worth more to the royal family or the house of obsidian and silver. She picks out a couple of outfits and sends them to the hideout for Ren. <laughs> Renan. I look over at uh, Veronica and I uh, tell her, do you have any manpower to hide out that can come and sell these garbs? I'm afraid we don't really specialize with that kind of resource. That would have to be yeah. outsourced. Do you have a textile fence? <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, let's see. Hey, Joshua, I can't make any. Am I able to still uh, make tributes for standing? Yeah that's, what I'm saying. yeah, that's what you were talking about before, but tributes have to be made in combat. I can't do it out of combat if I'm just looking standing with the covenant. No. Give an item. Yeah. No. Tributes are for combat. That's what they prey on. They prey on the desperation of you fighting. Oh, okay, cool. <clears throat> Odd. It's a win-win situation. Uh, if you pull it off, uh, you're, you're in deeper for the next one. And if you don't, <clears throat> guess where you get to go? You get to go to the Panda Express. No, you get to go to Pismo Beach and enjoy all the clams. Oh, unless, no. you make, unless you make a wrong turn at El Paso. The Koiki. <laughs> Quickie mark. Okay. Um, I was waiting for it and uh, I didn't get an albuquerque. Albuquerque. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell your New Mexican friends that you didn't know about albuquerque. Well. Mm. Uh, okay. So these are the details for infernal style as they're going to be written onto to scroll. And the group loot. That is a three hour drive up north. What's it what's its Rex? What's its Rex? Uh seventy five. It's all same with all the S rank styles. Oh, which means I can't actually learn it. Uh yeah. Oh seventy five oh. oh I can't learn this. I because well, I could use a dedicated training session to change my training to this. Is this better, though? Remember, the I thought the uh, the passive energy technique, that's what you're talking about, right? That has to be activated in combat, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. So that... Oh, that's so you could use it on either or. Yeah, you have to activate it, yeah. Okay, um... The accuracy is a bit less. I don't remember what the evasion is. Guard gauge is bigger, I think. Yep. There's no gay guard gauge on Genesis style. It's literally zero. Yeah, okay. And then obviously the type, it's not just dual wield. It's two hand, one hand, uh, short, and dual. Yay, so. Um, I don't know what God and Guard is, but it breaks it. And, um... Looks pretty good. It breaks God But if he extracts the style from the sword, uh, 
how would somebody else learn it? Or sorry, from if he extracts the style from the consciousness, uh, does the consciousness still have it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So somebody could still learn it the normal way, but yeah, the sword is nor is still perfectly functional. And as far as uh, he goes, can he? He can't memory mitosis that to us, right? Unless we use the training session. So you you can memory mitosis the style, but you still can't use it unless you meet the requirements. Oh, okay. So you can memory mitosis that to us. I'll be right yeah. back. And, and if you do make the requirements, you can use it. That's correct. It's a... Oh shit. Well, if he's got it, then I've got it. Brb. <laughs> I'm, I caught oh, wow. it. I, I caught it from him. Where's my soils? Put this infernal soil in here. But you still need a hundred uh, body catalysts too to use it, right? The style, negative. No. Oh, you just need it to learn it permanently from the sword. Exactly. Oh shit. <laughs> Work around so, the and I'm pretty sure I made your character with memory mitosis because you just can't be an elite guard without memory mitosis because that's you yeah. know, but uh, yeah, it's and this is just oh. called infoinal. Yeah, how could I uh, increase my weapon arts? Or, um... uh, there's some trainings you can look at in the training Dis document. Discipline. Discipline. Uh, discipline also helps, and then um, there's some titles in the training document too. Um, and uh, do you remember picking a class title, Alton? I think I should have one. Okay. Because that would be the other things. If you haven't picked a class style, you could pick one of those too, or class title. Yeah. Mm hmm. <sighs> those uh question marks uh hidden thing or just hasn't been created uh has not been designed yet there is no for suggestions there's no guard damage listed oh um let's see it's two-handed so it's probably going to be pretty ridiculous let me check uh okay uh yeah guard damage uh, is gonna be uh like probably five or six hundred yeah so uh i'm gonna go with the low one 500 unless you say otherwise yeah well, okay. it's probably safer to stay with 500 We'll, we'll put buff it as necessary later. And it's two handed. Uh, I'm black. Single handed. I'm Shit, I'm gonna have to go back and buy that hammer of dawn. I'm black. I'm black. And back. short. Shorty but gordy. And then, um. With, uh, Actually, we need to be a little bit more clear about the first ability. It doesn't just break God and Guard. It breaks uh, Defend and Ether Guard and all other forms of Guards, even break God guard. um, Okay, I'm going to put breaks all types of Guard, breaks yeah. all Guards, including God and Guard. Right, yeah. I'm going to do an all caps on the all, breaks all uh, guard, comma for effect, and looting. Okay, now if I 
if I understand on how to rework my character, there should yeah, be that, something. The dot and dart, or the period, space space term. I don't ever do space space. Are you supposed to do that? Hmm? I don't know. What's the problem here? Including Gordon Ramsay. Oh, it's got an issue because I put a dash between including and Gordon, and then I right click and it says including Gordon. Yeah. No, just leap to. Can I ignore it? Where's ignore it? I don't uh, know. I think this is my. We're probably gonna. I think we should remove the uh, dual wield and small weapon compatibility with it. Uh, okay. Small and D. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, mm. I think that's fine. I literally added the word God into the dictionary so I could cheat the it'll work, and now it's like, well, I don't know what God means. Uh huh. Oh, I Any advantages on this? One, two, three. Yeah, that's four, why I know. Five, six, seven, eight. The machine is wrong. Nine. Hold on, I only have nine minor techniques. Trainings? Yeah, trainings. Sorry. You sure about that? Are you sure? Let me Check count on one. You have to make one. sure to count the ranks in there too, because that that so like the one your page you're looking at, there's three ranks of combat that counts as three separate trainings. Yeah. So that increases. Hold on, all right, hold on. So let let me go back through and reread to make sure. Okay, so that so three ranks of that, which means that it so that one costs three. So three plus. Um, Genesis. One, that's one hundred. Two more. That's seven. That's eight. That's nine. That's eleven. That's twelve. Okay. How about that's this? Since you, since you took off the short yeah. and the dual, can we add pole and pole and shield? Uh, negative. There's other dedicated S rank styles for pull and shield. Okay. One, two. Can we add e you as in you, mama? No. Uh, you're saying your mama doesn't have a good style? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I. I only count 13. Uh, then you're missing some. How many are you supposed to have? You're supposed to have 15. Well, you probably didn't choose one or something. Or what is your, your what is your sub race? What's uh, up? I'm sorry, what did I miss? Sub race? Uh, my sub race is Lost Gross. Okay, so you actually, if, it, if you only have one, then you need, um, you need 18. Did you check all your tabs? These two that are checked, uh, racial, uh -huh. should not count those. Yeah, don't count the two ones checked racial. Uh, let me make sure. So there's none of four, there's none of three. Oh, wait a minute, go back there. Huh? Uh, do you have two sub raises? No, I I only chose one. Remember? Uh, cause I just looked at I looked at that, and one of them was Cyan, and one of them was Magian. So something was wrong there. Yeah, Rick. Right. Okay, so this one's origin is Magian. Is that correct? Yeah. Um. Focus tolerance and gravity reduction. Oh yeah, that's correct. From look threes. Hold on, so yeah, 
Oh, I didn't count how many ranks were in here. Yeah. Alright, Joshua. Um, you said there's jewels? I couldn't hear you, dude. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yeah. You said there's a like a container of jewels that were stained. So there's dull jewels and some uh, some two crests, obsidian silver family crests. Hmm. Um, can I do a a talented check to see if I recognize the jewels. Well, I count you having 17 trainings. I do? Yeah, not counting the two racials. So... Yeah, so the, um, uh, the jewels do not, you don't recollect them being anything of particular significance. Do I sense any mana from them? Negative. Well, I guess I've I'll just pick one up and examine it. Maybe it's just a regular old gemstone. It looks to be in good condition. Is a very uh, pristinely cut uh, uh, ruby. Mm -hmm. uh, Can I try to scratch it with your fingernails and all. See if it's real. Uh, you channel into it and nothing happens. Huh, just a fucking worthless ruby. <laughs> Who's got baryonic alchemy and can, can, can I... test its chemical constituents and see if it's if it's a genuine article? I don't have baryonic alchemy, no. Although, does it matter? Can because imagine make rubies? As long as you have alchemy training, you can still do that. Oh, have... okay. Well, is it real? Yeah. I'll check it out, see if it's real. Or I guess I should ask, is it natural? Natural. Uh, the chemical composition would indicate that it is natural. It is far too diluted for it to be uh, intentionally uh, unclean. This is a dirty, filthy ruby, naturally. Natural one, okay, so... That, that's probably a thing to have a natural gem. Wolzer Bolzer. Yeah. I'll put it in mental storage. Gem. How big was it? it? Like the They're size huge. of a fist or what? Uh, maybe just like your thumb. Okay. So. It wasn't shit. One times Ruby. <laughs> no. I mean, for Earth, it's something, but... Uh, maybe my golem will eat it. No! <laughs> Not for a magic royal jewelry box. I think I found one of my trainings that I could bump down by a lot. So there's not going to be any trainings, generally, that are going to give you direct discipline. Um, I think there's a couple trainings, maybe. Uh, that give you uh, what, what is, uh, one that I wanted to get was inner edge refinement. Okay. Because that gives me uh, five per rank. And uh, I feel like that'd be useful. Five what? Okay. Five weapon arts per rank, and I can get it up to rank three. That's a training? Yeah, yeah that was added a few weeks ago, I think. Oh, okay. I lie to you. You're my friends. And my only good ones at that. Lying yeah. to your friends is fun. <laughs> <laughs> We lie to each other all the time. Everybody tell does it. The game is getting other people to believe your lie. That's the fun part. And and not just that. It can't be like a good lie like, 
you know, something plausible. It's got to be something outrageous. <laughs> like, I remember when I was a kid, I convinced a neighbor, my my friend and I convinced our neighbor uh, that we killed a deer with uh, our BB guns. We timed oh, it perfectly and shot it through the eyes, and it died. <laughs> She's like, oh, my God. She's like, but she was like, I don't believe you. But then we went back. To, she's like, I want to go see. And we, she lived just across the street. So she came over and uh, she's like, hey, the boy said there's a deer in the back. He's like, yeah, yeah, we just got it. And she was like, wait, what? And so she went back. Yeah, there's a deer hanging because they literally just killed the deer. But then she didn't think to ask, well, did you shoot it? Did you beep it? Ask an adult. She was just like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. And left. <laughs> uh, always believed she, and she was out there uh, it's not a normal person but uh, anyway <laughs> that whole story was made up it's a nun mag and uh, so if anybody believed that story I literally just made it up yeah dun, 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 dun. yeah I'll tell you an act I'll tell you an actual funny story uh, when I was younger I convinced my brother that uh, instead of giving him mouthwash, I gave him toilet water. Hmm. Yeah, he stepped on my chest and about killed me. That doesn't sound believable, though. Why would toilet water taste like mouthwash? <laughs> no. Here's the best part. It was at a hotel, which means we got the little containers of mouthwash, which means I used it all. Then I just filled it up with water. And he told me this doesn't taste like mouthwash, and I said, "Yeah, it's because it's toilet water." And uh -huh. then he proceeded to knock the shit out of me. Well, did you get it from the tank, the back of the, the toilet, the tank? No, I got it from the sink. From the bowl. You you yeah. got it from the bowl of the toilet? No, I got it from the sink. That's not. Oh, I thought you said it was toilet water. He lied to yes, the guy and to said it was toilet water. water. I yeah. Think. It was me. That's what you should have told. I would have been like, so? <laughs> it's All not right. it's not really a, a thing. Unless you unless you didn't flush. <laughs> then that would be a problem. If you didn't smell that when you took a drink, you should <laughs> Well, that's your problem. <clears throat> okay, so I'll bump down my un my Unarmed damage down to rank one because I often use weapons and I do not use my hands. Good call. So I'll bump that down to one and I'll add. You could always swap uh, a discipline point for something else. Take it off intelligence or something. Just be wary that if you do like intelligence jump, you're, you're going to limit your spells. Or you could limit some of your spells. But generally a 7, 6, 7 is good for most spells. Uh, and then we, the one that always pays the price is resistance and constitution. <laughs> but at least being a side, you get bonuses to constitution. That's why there's short weapons, you know? Just get small weapons, get dual wield some daggers, just get a low constitution, and make sure you have the other stats. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what, that's what my ma that's the the magic I made. Uh, what campaign was that for? That's the adept I made. Oh, that was the storm. <laughs> that was the storm from one. Yeah, he had fucking daggers. That's <laughs> he had a dual wield style with some daggers, and his constitution was a two. My constitution is a three, and I'm dual wielding the katanas I barely can handle. Wait, can you? How can you? Yeah, those the katanas are, are a three? Yeah. Really? They must not be great. What's their damage? 
Better than the Magian dagger I had. Well, the dagger is probably like a four. <laughs> I think it was like maybe an eleven. Really? That yeah, would be a long sword, I thought. Magian uh, long sword an eleven. I think I double checked. Let me see. I, I deleted the thing. I don't remember. I know that it was. That was the. That was it's the sword the of Mephistopheles it should forever. Be in group blue. Alright. I switched it out. So I switched my stuff around. So now I have a weapon arts of 75. Oh, right. so. the, ba the base damage on those was 6. Six. Yeah. Oh, you got Dark Magic and Festers, that's why. Yeah, no, the, the dagger I had before, the the Blue Magian dagger, that one was like a base level 4 or something. Bad. Good scale and good accuracy, though. Accuracy is kind of bad for a dagger, actually. Small weapons are supposed to have way higher accuracy. Okay. So where are these katanners at? What are they called? I thought these the are infestors. Uh, uh, Saudi's using them. I'll just I'll just look at your page then. It's the very first one on Group Blue. Oh really? Yeah, the Dark Magian infestors. Oh, the, those are the katanas? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. They're only sixes. Yeah, I thought they were like 14 or something. Oh, wait, my yeah, mag... Yeah. I thought they were too, but I don't know why. My Magian Dagger was got a stronger base. Base 7. Hmm. Yeah, but you, you can't really use it effectively with Genesis style. Yeah, no. <laughs> which is, you know, 450 oh. accuracy and 250 evasion. No yeah. guard did, I mean. Mm -hmm. I still need to get that technique that allows me to change styles at the end of a melee. Uh, I think that's probably going to be turned into a stance. <laughs> Fuck. Hey, Cronus, can you help me real quick? It depends on what you need help with. But, um, like, I'm not, I'm not going to help you unzip your pants or anything like that unless you're absolutely in dire medical need. Uh, m more around the lines of I just need help putting in the, um, swords information and the uh, internal technique. Uh, so we're in equipment? Uh, yeah, sorry, I had something different popped up. <laughs> What's the name of this sword? Uh, the Cyan Heroes uh, Great Sword. That's what it's called? I'm gonna call uh, it the Hero, Heroes Great Sword. Cyan Heroes Great Sword. You guys away. You know when you're trying to type and work your mouse and your bong gets in the way? You worry about knocking it over? Your bong? You ever have that problem? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, although it's funny, I'm taking I'm taking uh, ceramics and the guy the guy who uh, is our teacher, his name is Mr. Ratliff. Although you're not allowed to call him Mi what? Uh, Is that me? Did I disconnect? It is me. I disconnected. Shit. <laughs> What are y'all up to? Am I oh. dying? Is that you? Is that me? Oh, hello. Oh, there. You hear me? Goes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah everybody, everybody just started dropping. Everybody died. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. And put the no. right, sign off, sign back in. Okay. It was fucking me. That's what. Sign hero, great sword. Uh, yeah. um. 
base base damage is 19. Let me double check the stats on that because that's an old weapon. What's the requirement? Um, no requirement. Anybody can use it. Okay, so the base is normal. Uh, accuracy is technically normal. Uh, requirement's going to be a 6. Uh, so what's the scaling? 14 and 6. 14, 14 yeah, that's fine. Durability is stress. 800. There's no stress listed. Stress is a 7 and requirements a 6. Uh, durability is 800. 800. Oh, I'm sorry. DDP 445 got busted again. I think this mine. Am I dropping? Fuck. I got 60 frames per second. What is going on? Oh, yeah, on? my voice connection is like one bar. Can yeah, you hear me? You yeah. saw that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't know if that was my internet or if it was just discord or i didn't know discord borged yeah. out like that it hasn't happened in a, in a minute that's for sure i'm back yay hello yay. hey are we going back are we going to the number four number chamber number four now uh yeah your call where would the uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah hey and you said you you needed the style plugged in yeah. EDP four four five got caught again with another fifteen year old kid. <laughs> I don't know who or what that is. It's okay. an idiot. You remember that? Re you remember that really big uh, YouTuber, the one who was African American, um, sunglasses. Yeah, I'll get a picture of him. No, American YouTuber. Soon, to share your internet cringe afterward. Yeah, let's, let's do that later. We'll do the. All right. Uh, so next building, next chamber. There's still two more. Uh, I'm pretty sure you played less for this one. This is the transcendental study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like 2300 or something, maybe. I don't know. Um, reluctant to leave, Veronica eventually is convinced to move over to the second chamber, and you take a mistra out. Yet again, like before, the stone moves away, forming and reshaping uh, to, for a doorway for yourselves to move through. Whamming in their clothing. There is a lit-up area and a laboratory for transcendental magic. There are incubation chambers apparently receiving the most of the mana supply for the chamber. It looks, it looks to be mostly abandoned and appears to be that some sort of accident occurred when it was last occupied, destroying whatever results uh, or tests that were being conducted prior. Just con considering the lack of cleanup, it appears that the person left in a hurry or was possibly even killed during the experiment. As they clearly never returned to fix the place. Transcendental <clears throat> magic, is that like, um... Can I get a little quick breakdown on what that is? So, transcendental magic is an advanced magic. It's the same thing as uh, transcendentalism. It's basically used to transcend regular limitations of things and get the juicy stuff underneath. This is why it bypasses requirements for equipment. Uh, you can grab stuff inside of sealed, transitively sealed stuff, um, and you can use it to boost your catalyst capabilities as well as uh, channel soul energy, all of which is locked behind either some sort of metaphorical or literal stress hole, I mean a uh, stress threshold. You're like, 
steroids for magic users. Basically, yeah, you could think of it that way. I like to think of enchanting as kind of steroids, but yeah, transcendental, yeah, you're transcending limitations temporarily. That's pretty cool. Anyway, um, in the incubation chambers, you see uh, the myriad of mana signatures being uh, that are sort of interlaced and firing at different intervals as the conduct of this experiment is underway apparently for the past 12 cycles this chamber has been op unopened while this experiment has been taking place well, that's pretty cool it's scary with an intelligence check what do we got? check. Who, who do you want to make intelligence? Everyone? Everybody who's in the chamber. Everybody um, in the club. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, do I get uh, cognitive virtuosity on this? Uh, negative. Son of a gun. Ooh, that's, I've rolled twice today. Both were ones. Not bad. <laughs> but, I mean, I am number one, so... Oh, it's no. no! It's really no puzzle why I roll so many wands. Oh, uh, 13 total. <clears throat> roll okay, a four. Scotty and, uh, Scotty and uh, Shin Na both recognize that the incubation chamber hold objects inside them. There are two <laughs> incubation chambers. <laughs> they are very minute. Um... Damn, you must be, people have to must be real stupid not to know what chambers do. No, 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 no. There's an apparatus in them that's visible, but the tiny objects in are not so visible. Uh, in each of the apparatus within the incubation chamber, uh, the first has two small yellow orbs that could fit in the size of your hand. Well, the next incubation chamber to his side hold three small green orbs. Have we done any uh, checks on the computer or memory recovery? No, we haven't done any yeah. memory recovery yet. It's The memory recovery shows someone who is channeling memory energy catalyst to try to feed information to these chamber where he eventually lost control of his memory energy and had some kind of episode destroying the apparatus around and injuring himself and a friend. Like he had, like he had some kind of fit? Like he just freaked out? They were conducting transcendental magic on his uh, memory energy catalyst Skilly and shit. it erupted in violent uh, projections of his memories. What about uh, Magitek? Are there any computers to check? Uh, those are all destroyed in the attack. Damn. He's <laughs> got <laughs> the black lights. Check <laughs> this <laughs> Mealy. Good uh, deliverance immemorial. Um, uh, potency skills with level of alteration structure being corrected. Would that repair everything in here? Uh, yeah, you can give it a shot. Let's fucking. <clears throat> Deliverance magic, though. Okie dokie. Does it need to be presaged? No, not this one. Okie dokie. Over a vast period, everybody steps out of the room. You channel Ethereal to recorrect the destroyed Magitek that was conducted, uh, I'm sorry, constructed here in this lab. Eventually, it is all reconstituted before your eyes as the mana uh, coalesces into pure matter and is reconnected and put online. However, all the data banks are emptied. Oh, the fucking ethereal emptied the data banks? 
Uh, it can't restore uh, bad data, no. Oh, it makes the machine operational again, though. We could right. refurbish it, probably, right? Uh, it's already been mint condition now. Oh. It's been would uh, would have refurbished, done that, and restored the fucking uh, data? Uh, only if the Magitech has a refurbish function built into it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we have no. How will we determine what they were doing here? Shit. Well, you could try inspecting what's in the incubation chambers. Can we? Okay. Um. How big are these spheres? Like the size of your fist, or a marble, or the spheres are very small. They could fit inside your fist. Yeah. So like a golf ball, maybe. Yeah. Ping pong ball. Could I decipher function uh, the 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 incubation chambers to see what's in there, or is that no? Uh, this is not. It's it's def, it's certainly Magitech. It's meant to house the output of whatever it is channeled into and keep the uh, mana positively charged over long periods of time. Okay. Which it has done so for over twelve cycles, apparently. So it it's not the chamber doesn't monitor the contents at all. Uh, it monitors the saturation inside the chamber. Okay. Maybe pilfer data. Oh. Um, it appears to be holding the contents and notes that the saturation is kept in a certain percentage and as you know, maintain that percentage with great precision for 12 cycles. Okay. Seems pretty, um, reliable. Mm -hmm. Then, I agree So, no information on what these things are. Uh, we've never seen them before, I take it. The orbs? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, they look remarkably similar to memory orbs that you absorb. Oh, okay. Like, like the ones that we, okay. The, the ones that, uh, that helped us learn spells and energy techniques. That's correct. Get the... So how do we look at these? We got to get them off the the mechanism they're on, right? Yeah, you yeah. have to terminate the. Um, you could, I mean, you could forcibly take them out. There's nothing wrong with that. You could, you could also consider turning off the mechanism, cut off its mana supply. I mean, that it usually seems like a better idea. If you don't won't know what's going on, to uh, unplug the machine rather than uh, hit it with a hammer. In most cases, anyway. Well, I think that's bullshit, dude. <laughs> um, there's plenty of times where you want to hit it with a hammer. I don't have any memory spells. Or something else. This would probably be good for a scion. No. Who's proficient in memory again? Um, presumably like what? Which race is uh, proficient in memory? Uh, the the oh, Raya. The, the Raya. The, the Raya that can channel are the most gifted in the memory, but most races are not particularly good at it. Saya are okay, and Necri is the next best. Okay, so, uh, what do we want to do? Yeah, I guess we could just take, take them out. And see, uh, I don't see oh, what... you want to extract them? Yeah, let's 
let's turn the cut the power source or the mana source. Um, and then with the newly reconstructed uh, terminal, you immediately uh, disengage the incubation. The saturation uh, plummets, and the mana flow is cut off. And the orbs oh, all just need fifteen there. more minutes. <laughs> the, orbs, uh, the orbs concentrate at the center and uh, fall down. Do you tell Kinesis to extract them? I guess. Okie dokie, you unscrew the tops of the incubation cells and grab the orbs with telekinesis. They appear to be relatively solid to the touch. We examine them with um, lying arts. Uh, sure. Decipher the function of, uh, you said there was yellow and what? Green. Yellow, then. Let's go with urine first. <laughs> uh, it's not Magitek. It appears to just be a memory orb. Oh. Meant to be channeled and absorbed. Okay. I'll try the green one, then. Same thing. Who's going to do memory. it? Who's going to do it? Their memories. Of the old time again. There's three yellow and two green? That's correct. No, two green, two yellow and three green. And so I'll take one each two and see what happens. Just kidding. All right, who's taking we're gonna, one? We're going to try to take a memory. Absorb one. I'll wait until you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, you said you're gonna do one. I'll be gonna, a, I'll, I'll be the leader. Which one should? Uh, which one would be the? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll cut you out a line of memory. Here you go. You can snort this guy right here. Juicy, juicy, fat memory right here. I don't know. There's only two green. Wait, well, yeah, two green. If um, if these would be better served for a. I, uh, I don't know. You, well, the dope might be like memories of the royal family okay. 5,000 cycles ago, and you're like, well, um. I'll, I'll go ahead and. Like make another orb. orb. I'll take a green one. I'll, I'll, I'll just do the green one. One of the green you ones. You absorb the green orb in a mere moment. Uh, you receive three extra spell points. Oh. Oh. All right. Right. And you start tripping out, man. Start freaking right out, man. So I run up. I run up to Kronos. Hey, hey, you want some spell points? Uh, how many? I got three for you, man. Um, I'm, I'm probably good. I'm sitting on like 150 right now. <laughs> uh, oh no, I did spend. I spent a bunch. I'm sitting on 95 right now, so. I'm good. I think maybe uh, Alton could use spell points more than me. I don't know, Shinna. Mm -hmm. Looks like he could use some spell points. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Not, meanwhile, I mean, yeah. Meanwhile, Alton is staring at his new pretty sword. Ooh, so much weaponry, <laughs> so much power. I'll channel him to one the yellow ones. See what happens? Wait, wait, wait. Don't talk to it. Uh, you received five extra skill points. Oh, cool. That was a yellow one? That's correct. Yeah. Well, I don't need skill points either. You guys, you guys have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alton, if you... I'm not forcing you to, 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 to have spell points, but if you want some spell points, there's some green... I would, I would uh, say take the green one. He's not there. Oh. Well. He says, I want the orange one. <laughs> and you know what the orange one does. No. Minus 50 spell points and skill points. 
that would be a fun mechanic. That'd be a cool that would be a fun mechanic. <laughs> and your first action in the next combat interaction is to punch, punch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You only allowed yeah, one better. defensive action for three battles. Attack your yourself. <laughs> your accuracy versus your evasion. So there's the yellow orb that gives you spell points. There's the green orb that gives you. Green is spell points for three. Yellow oh, is five. There's only one green one left. Nope. Oh, There's wait, no. two green and one yellow left. Two green, one yellow? Oh, okay. Uh, I don't want any. So, uh, it's, it's just, just Zadi and uh, Alton. I guess I'll take uh, the one that gives me more spell points. Okay, you can take a green one that's three extra spell points. And, um, Mark that down. Put that down in extra spell points. Three. One, two, three. In extra oh. spell points. My... <coughs> It'll automatically increase your total. Or your reserve. That's okay. Lucilla, one more spell point orb and one more uh, skill point orb left. <coughs> you guys take them. I could, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll just put them in the mental storage for for now. Oh, for, um, how about for, um, for, uh, yeah, yeah, if he, I'll save a, a choice, a couple choices for him. Gold. It will gold. just lap suffice in the study of that spell diagram. The what? Would this lab suffice to study that diagram? Negative. This is not an alchemical lab. Okay. And Saudi is not good enough anyway. No. <laughs> That's what you said. You need That's not the, true. You, I thought you said you need you need a team and a facility. That's true. All right. So the lore, in case anybody was wondering, is these orbs are normally used to learn new spells and techniques and whatever. However, there is no, uh, what do you call it, reliable way at least thus far, to produce these orbs. Currently, they are produced through abnormalities in Casilios, in congruence with some sort of memory that's latent in the area. However, these, according to the memory at least, these orbs were not in the incubation chambers when the memory ended. So maybe it propagates over time? I can't answer that. That's a good, that's a good, uh, well, guess. Incubation chamber, so maybe it's, it's inoculated, and it's, it's a, well, it's an incubation, it's, a, it's an incubation chamber, so it's inherently, um, creating a specific environment for something to grow from a, very small to a adolescent ish toddler, whatever. So it's possible the thing are propagating within the um, incubation chamber, but that would be incredibly lucky. They could have built the incubation chamber in that space, but 
They're probably propagating somewhere else and then put there to uh, mature. Well, according to the the auction house, this, this chamber was unopened for 12 cycles. So I think whatever they were doing with that memory yes. created it, but they weren't, they didn't get the, the chance to reap their rewards. Uh. You know why? They died. They were asked to pilot, they were asked to pilot a, uh, a Magian scientist to uh, a sector in, in the uh, the Arbonan Empire. Her name was Eleanor. No. Oh. And uh, that's why this um, container is up for grabs. <laughs> they took a ride with uh... <laughs> excuse me, they took a fateful ride with uh, Eleanor Forehead. <laughs> Did he just say Eleanor Forehead? <laughs> Uh, you know, the late Aaron relative Josh of Eladin for five head. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, my question was, uh, could you explain variation slots to me? So variation yeah. slots are, if you'll notice, every style has a unique ability underneath the stats. s rank styles are special in that they come with their own ability. However, they come with variation slots that allow you to combine the special abilities of other styles that you know already. <laughs> However, purchasing one of these slots and filling it with the ability of another style, as long as it's not an S rank style, um, costs 20 technique, or I'm sorry, 20 skill points. Okay. All right, man. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alton just sitting in the corner, happy that he finally has an S rank technique. <laughs> and he has almost sword. Will we be able to take these orbs to Magi to get them studied to get them like recreated? Or the... uh, Magi already has a lot of study dedicated to these, but as I mentioned, nobody has discovered a reliable way of creating them. Okay, so we might have. Uh... I wish we could imprison this whole thing. Like this whole case, but that would be impossible with Sister. What are you talking about? Like the whole lab, I wish we could... Do you have the map design spell? I know, I don't. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I do have well, spell yeah. points. Well, if you want to be able to map Magitech designs, like everything in this room, you use the map design spell. Map design spell. Fuck. We talk about that spell like what, once a session and no one ever gets it. It's map construct, right? It's plane. Uh, or no. Yeah, it'll be plane in the branch of plane, yeah. Alright. I'll get it. If that's okay. Oh, Great success. Um. How much uh, would I need? To, would it need to be extreme to map this? Uh, yeah, for the most results, you're gonna want to get the highest potency. Um, novice. Uh, points. I have some to spare. I wish it worked like that. Like that. Alright, I made it. Come back. 
Loser Bozer Bozer. Alright, so, uh, what, what are we doing? We, um. Uh, I'm mapping map. the, uh, Magitech designs, uh, from all the restored, uh, components. Okay. Map construct. We're still in the royal. Nope. This is the transcendental study. The, the goody container. The one I think is gonna is the goody container. Uh, <laughs> the royal chamber has not been unopened. That's the first one you bought. It has been unopened for 150 cycles. Oh yeah, that's pro that's probably the goody one. Maybe or it's got a really old donkey in it. A whole it's got a whole grip of donkeys in it. I think we'll find out next time. Hmm. Yeah, that probably. Oh, what branch would this be? Just plying, to? Yeah, there's a branch called plying. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, just the one chambers left. Just the one chamber. Extreme, and that's two hundred. It costs two hundred. Jeez. You good, bro? Or wait, uh, I forgot how this goes. Yeah, that would be. I tell you, Megan. Two hundred. I don't need to use this in battle. Or wait, wrong, wrong one. Oops. Sixty. It costs sixty only. It goes for. That sounds like a flying art spell. It's extreme novice. Yeah. Yeah, extreme novice sixty. Unless it's uh, activate, I think uh, that section is maybe sixty-five or seventy. Unless it's but banned. Probably hella banned. But outside of combat, yeah. Well, outside of combat, it costs two thousand. No. How much uh, spell points is is that? I don't know this yet. Uh, 18? It's, it's three. Basic, three? It's a basic three tool. Three for a novice, yeah. Three for novice. A basic tool and a novice. Okay. So, that green orb I just ate. That's correct. Went bye bye. Yeah, we'll probably do the next chamber because the bit the next chamber is gonna take a little bit, and I don't want to be here that long because uh, well, I'm not really sure how long it might take. It is importante. Okay. All right. Okie dokies. Next bat time. Next bat channel. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks everybody right. for coming. Thank Have a good you. rest of your day, fellas. You too. See God. Bye bye. Uh, all right guys i've got some things i need to take care of so i will be back in a jiffy later <laughs>